This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to lonewolfpaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands. And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. This episode of PTG is brought to you by Transfuse, the hydration, immunity, and mental clarity booster and transcend nootropics. And with just one serving of Transfuse, it is equal to four of the competitors in one. And there is no other formula as potent as Transfuse on the market. And you are all encouraged to go and compare the formulas with any other products on the market and see for yourself just how amazing it is. Transfuse uses all natural flavors, colors, and sweeteners, and there's no proprietary blends, so you know exactly every milligram of each ingredient you are consuming. This formula was created to optimize your mind, body, and immunity, and Transfuse can be used as a high-performance multiplier for working out and any competitive sports or demanding lifestyles. Also, be sure to get your hands on the Transcend, which is a nootropic formula that improves cognitive function and can replace your morning coffee, pre-workouts, energy drinks, or energy shots. The formula contains lion's mane, alpha-GPC, teacrine, and dynamin. Transcend was created based off of research studies to help with cognitive control and mental function. So get your hands on some Transcend and some Transfuse today. Head on over to TransfuseUSA.com. Use code PLAYTHEGAME for 10% off and sign up for monthly delivery service for an additional 10% off to take advantage of 20% off these products altogether right now. Head on over there, support PTG. We appreciate you and we'll see you in the show. This episode of PTG Podcast is brought to you by the new HK Army UV Glow Charging Sonic Loader and HK Army Glow in the Dark Paintballs. Everybody, it is time to light up the night sky with one of the most exciting paintball experiences you will ever have. There are seven integrated UV LED lights in the new UV Glow Charging Sonic Loader that will illuminate the HK Army Glow in the Dark Paintballs and have them supercharged for nonstop nightball fun. You do not know what you are missing out on until you go enjoy some night ball with some friends and shoot these instant tracers downfield with HK Army's glow-in-the-dark paintballs that provide precision accuracy, vibrant glow fill, and are all available right now on HKArmy.com. Do yourself a favor, head on over to HKArmy.com and get the new HK UV Sonic Loader and glow-in-the-dark paintballs right now exclusively at HK Army. Log in, support, have fun, and we'll see you on the field. Tell them PTG sent you. What's going on, PTG Nation? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This morning, we have an absolute banger for you. We have Mike Hinman, owner of the WCPPL, on the show. We just wrapped up event four, the season finale, and it was one of the greatest events that I've been to all season long. So much uh, exciting play, tons of talent out there, and everybody's having a great time. Mike has a ton of news for us, some, some stuff coming out of the diesel camp, and much, much more. As always, Hinge keeps it incredibly real. This is an episode you guys are not going to want to miss, and you're definitely going to want to listen to all the way through. So without further ado, we're going to hop in the show. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting, Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. He came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to Play the Game podcast. We got Marchie and we got the legend himself, Michael Hinman. Thank you so much for joining us again. You're a fan favorite. You're a staple on the show, always coming through, having a good time. And Let's we appreciate go. all that you do in the game. You just got done with the Dub C. You know, you've been working hard on the leagues that you own and just an absolute dominator. What's going on, Mikey? How you doing? Just living, man. Just kind of uh, toning it down for the offseason, right? Two back-to-back weekends, 
Jeez. But uh, probably 170, 180 teams ran. Everybody over here on this side of the fence is a little worn out. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, dude. You guys clock in for those dub C's. And then I know you're working hard also with the US XBL. I can't even imagine what it's like running two leagues at the same time. But with the dub C, everyone is having the best time of their lives out there. You know, I have a couple teams from AZ that head out there. They enjoy it. There's people from the entire West Coast that are traveling there, even all, mm -hmm. from all over the country. People are flying in to play at the Dub C, which is really cool to see. Talk to us about what it's been like uh, running the events and, and how everything's been going with that project. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, we're blessed, right? Like, the, you know, for everybody that runs a paintball tournament, whether it's Tom or myself or all the other regional promoters we have, it's the vision, right? The passion that they have, that they put into it, that makes it special. And I don't think 16 years ago when the NPPL folded and we stepped up because there was a massive void on the West Coast for a regional league, we could have ever seen it getting to this place, right? Mm. But I mean, it's just, uh, there's a lot of factors that we could endlessly talk about. But, you know, I, I know one thing, when I was uh, owner for a little bit of the NXL, Richmond Italia on one of our many group chats chimed in and he talked about, you know, the best way for tournament paintball to go forward. And, you know, not a lot of people know who Richmond is or really what Richmond's about, but I think the people that do know him know he's a really smart human being. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're in a room with yeah. smart people and you just <laughs> shut your mouth and listen. And, uh, you know, he said, he goes, the best way for this to work for paintball in general is very healthy regions. And then whether you call it a super regional or the NXL level, but without the regional and local area being healthy, the top would inevitably die. Right. So mm -hmm. for us, yeah. I feel like our, our role in this thing on the West coast has always been to keep the West coast healthy. Right. Then we also factor in the NXL is now coming back to Vegas. We're stoked for that. I don't think, and you know, I talk to Tom a lot, right. When we talk about a lot of things that obviously can't let out, Tom lets me in on a lot of things I should say. And, you know, I don't think they ever wanted to go away from Las Vegas. It's just when all your equipment's out on the East Coast and you have to 18-wheeler it in and back, it's just expensive. It's not a, I don't want to. It's just, man. And it's oh, an yeah. expensive venue. Craig Ranch, where the it's held. Any of us can go do a tournament there. It's not anything special. Like, they'll rent it to anybody. As long as the weekend's open, it's just an expensive venue. Mm -hmm. On top of it, the equipment hotels haven't gotten any cheaper right like it's not like we're in covid mm -hmm. in las vegas where they're giving away suites at the mgm for <laughs> 200 bucks a night it's normal vegas pricing and it's expensive so for us without vegas ever and the closest really was texas i believe i know dave had up in sacramento the minor event but i think for teams on the west coast that was a tough one to really support because now you're justifying basically having a wc style event at a local field for $2,600 or 24 or whatever it was with not the same with less prizes than we give away. It was just difficult. Right. So for us, it's been with nobody close to us on the NXL side, but has just been running the best regional leagues. And we have a lot of upper ranked players, amateur, semi-pro, whatever you want to call them that really can't afford. I mean, we've seen so many teams implode out here, right? High level teams. Which is unfortunate, but yeah. Well, I mean, even look at like Marcelo's guys that he coaches. Not that they imploded, but the LTZ guys went away. Mm -hmm. They all became adults. Some of them became very successful adults that could afford a paintball team again. <laughs> not that, they, I mean, Sean and those guys never paid for it. Bart originally had LTZ. Mm -hmm. He got himself in some hot water, is gone from paintball, and then they came back. But what not, you, not Bart Yakimax, everybody no, knows. No, Another Bart. Bart, Bart yeah. from LTZ. A distinction there. You have these guys that, <laughs> want to play higher level paintball so for us it's and we've had to build it the premier division I mean, we had events a couple of years ago where we had five teams at it four teams at it mm -hmm. and you know it's a lot of money when you're guaranteeing prizes that just don't make sense and i mean it, to be honest it's no different than the nxl with the pro division no knock at the pro guys it's just from a simple bit however much the entries are to however much that field cost plus prizes and everything else it's just expensive and i think when people outside of the industry the players hear about it they think there's just tons of money coming in and really for a a paintball tournament or a promoter you have entry fees and you have jd from fitz calling jd I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> shout right out back. to jd <laughs> uh you know you have that and i mean most regional leagues sell paint nxl has some sponsorship money but it's nothing compared to what it once was 
Like it's, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for us, it's, we've invested in it. We've now built it. I think the last event we had 13 premier teams, which is good, right? Like by the end of the year, every league just heads down on upper end participation. So it's gone well, man. It's uh, we're stoked with it. Right. You're just yeah. blessed, right? 16 years. It's got to be like what Dana White sees watching every fight <laughs> in the UFC, right? You know mm -hmm. the big names, but then For the sure. little names come in, right? Like D4, Ryan Greenspan's team that he coached devoted. A lot of those people have been around, Reina, her husband, but then they end up coming in and winning our D4, which, what, 30-some teams? Like, it's, nice. it's a grueling fight to get to the end, no matter who you are. So it's just cool to sit and watch D5. We have we, This year, we brought in D6 and Young Gun 3-man, it's definitely not been as big as we would have hoped out here because it's a $180 entry fee. It's if you have four guys on the roster, it's basically five bucks more than a normal day of paintball. But yeah. having that, having the uh, the youngsters out there running around, you know, getting involved in the tournament scene, seeing oh, yeah. all these different players rubbing elbows, having conversations like that's really what is going to perpetuate, like you oh. said, strong local growth and really good talent as well. Which has to be the goal here, right? I, I love what you said about that's how we cultivating build pockets. Yeah. That's how we build paintball, right? And another thing, my brain works in odd ways, but you know, another <laughs> one is like if we were to if we were to get ANS on here, right? Like whether it's the owner or the Rory or whoever does all the videos, and say, man, for every hundred guns you sell, ANS is the biggest, right? We're just using them, or we can use Lone Wolf, right? For every Shout out to Lone Wolf. guns you Let's sell, go. and they sponsor us too. We love them. Yeah. For every hundred high-end guns you sell, how many of those do you think are going into tournament paintball, NXL, WCPL, any level of tournament paintball? But my belief is I believe it's less than 50% of those guns are at the tournament with us. There is a lot of people back home, dads and sons, you know, walk-ons at SC Village or every field in the world that just can't get over. It. And I think we're we're all, I mean, YouTube, obviously, but as a community, we're being more accepting of bringing those new, hey, kid, you, you know, you want to shoot my gun? I watch yeah. Mouse do it at the field. I think we're getting better at it, but it's still pretty scary. Like when we go to ASG, Marcelo knows, like there's a net that separates us from the walk-ons walking out. And those kids stand there and look through that net at us. And no matter how kind we are, it's just difficult to bring them in. You know what I mean? Like there's a probably a stigma just a fear that they're going to come out and just get, you know, dunked on. Cause a lot of our videos are people just getting the highlight reels are people getting smashed. You know what I mean? And that's hard to sell to kids. So as we, as a community keep in all the regional leagues, keep working on doing it, we have to do it. Right. We have to keep fresh troops coming into this thing. And it's just difficult. Even like our league D five is our lowest X ball. No matter where you set that threshold, it's still pretty competitive. You get to the like the pole position guys won yeah. from Arizona. There's some pretty competitive dudes on there. You know what I mean? Against new players, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be a much of a match. So mm -hmm. we're you know, the beginner young gun is definitely slower on the West Coast. It's interesting. We go to Texas though, the young guns in Texas, which every league in Texas from XTPL to USXBL to Bunkerfest all did young guns this year. And there's a lot more young gun teams sitting in Texas right now. So the future nice. looks right for them, but for us to build that. Mike, I have a question for you. And this was brought to my attention by Ryan Podesta this weekend at your event. Um, he said, you know, he, he loves that We're always talking about ways to grow paintball and keep more tournament players involved. He said, there's one thing that we're missing that we haven't brought up yet. And um, when he mentioned his point, I wasn't really sure what side to take because I am I have for a long time been a believer that if you play a full season in D5, you should be D4 no matter what. His point was that currently with the with the ranking system, if you play a whole season D5, but you get, you know, say you get last place every event, you still have to move up to D4. One, no. I don't know if that's true. No. That's not true. No. I can go back two years, Las Vegas, Venom from our league. I actually got to the end of the season, looked at my yeah. season rankings, and started going backwards through who played all four events. And unfortunately, I believe it was two or three years ago, Vegas uh -huh. Venom was the lowest ranked team. They had a ways to go. And uh -huh. I clicked on all their, from our side of the APPA forum as a league promoter, I believe they call it, I can see your name and your points right next to your thing. And their whole team could still play D5 for another season. And they did, they did better. So the oh, points, interesting. Okay. Yeah, the points are just, now what becomes tough is when you have a local league, 
with 10 teams, that's the number in APPA, mm -hmm. is 10 teams. Once you hit that, it's the maximum amount of points equal to winning an NXL event. Got it. That's okay. difficult, right? Because okay. like Chris at APPA has to draw a line somewhere. Now, right. if you have less than 10 teams, let's say you have eight, first place is only 80% of the points. If you only have five teams, it's only 50% of the points. At that point, you will probably would not rank out. But yes, mm -hmm. you can rank up. But looking at some, I mean, we hear it all the time. Like mm -hmm. we hear it all the time that, uh, you know, like we're going to get ranked out too early. And then I go look, you know, Marcelo or Tyler's team, whoever it is. And you go look at the players and you're kind of like, yeah, man, you played my league, four events. You played the ASG league with four events. You've played eight events this year. I know you've been in the middle of the pack, as you call it. But so do we give you a second season in D5? And I'm, I'm okay with also lowering the threshold in four to make it not as easy to stay in four to have an easier step into that. Mm -hmm. But like if we took the bottom, the middle pack of D5 teams, whether it's USXBL or WCPL and let them stay there for another year. And now we have a bunch of kids, our D6, young gun, because we're starting to see that too, right? Young gun right. parents asking, hey, can my child, you know, play on this young gun team and also play on an X-ball team at the same event? Yes, you can. But once they start getting those points for D5 and it ranks them out of young guns, they can't go back. And like the Destiny's son is a great, Nico's a great, for instance, that kid's a monster. Yeah, yeah he is. Absolutely. You, and I mean, of course, right? Growing up with any of us and Ryan. NorCal, baby. Father, you're going to, but I mean, the kid's at the field every weekend. Yeah. Playing paintball, watching his dad play paintball. He's really good. It, I totally understand what they're saying, but there's the other side of it. No matter what the event is. Go mm -hmm. look at the teams that go 0 and 4, where the scores 1 to 4, 0 to 4, 0 to 4, and that's it. The analytics would be interesting to see how many of those teams keep playing paintball. Yeah, that's what I that's exactly what I said to Ryan. I was like, because he says that up at the CEPL, he is certain that there are a lot of teams that get just kind of ranked out and they say, Well, we're not gonna go play D4 because we're just getting beat up. And he he's certain of that. And I was like, Well, yeah, but what about the other end of it of the teams that are getting beat? in d5 just because there's you know experienced teams that have been there for two seasons i don't know the answer that's that's why i was kind of looking to you for that you i know? miss you know what i miss is the og days where it was like pro novice <laughs> amateur you know rookie amateur, yeah, and that was it. I, yeah. i've i've always taken the stance that yeah with division five you should only be allowed one season in d5 and then you should go to d4 because d5 should be like it's your first year playing tournament paintball that's what d5 means to me um maybe it's because again when when we started d3 was the lowest division you know that we didn't even have d4 let alone d5 so i don't know that's where my d6? brain works on it is there a d6 there, there we is, do uh, have a d6 three man like beginner beginner yeah, and that's I mean, right. looking at the teams that are playing it most of them you know they're not wearing you know they're wearing archie or marcello or yours jersey they're not wearing custom suited mm -hmm. and booted team stuff they're truly transitioning yeah Talk to a guy middle-aged guy he had ref with us once and I, I I knew who he was and he was playing our three men. He's just like, you know, I want to get into this. This is an easy thing for me. It's cheap. But the interesting part is that, and APPA tracks these analytics. So we'll, as promoters, we'll be able to know, but if WC had, let's just say a hundred D six young gun players, it'll be interesting to see out of that hundred next year, how many of them go into division five. Right. So there is a beginner step to step at, but I mean, no matter where, no matter where you draw that line, there's going to be somebody on one mm -hmm. side or the other that's not going to be happy with it. Of course. All right. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. Sound off in the YouTube comments. Head on over to the YouTube page. Sound off in the comments. Let us know your thoughts on everything. They're doing, everyone is doing everything possible to make the best product possible. You know, like the ears are open, the uh, ideas are flowing. And I know that APPA and everything that all these tournament series across the country do, they want to cater to obviously the client and make sure everybody's having a good time well and for us really quick to finish that up we also go back two years ago at wc where the la wild cards decided to intentionally oh intentionally create new profiles for one of their players and by doing so cheated the whole system i had called the coach out the owner aaron like yo bro you're back in <laughs> like for one of you two you take 10 years off and you're back in d5 and he goes, a win's a win. And I said, not for all of us. Like for all of us that have been up above novice level paintball, it's not the same for us. And they knowingly did it. They 
ultimately defrauded a ton of teams by cheating the system, stole money from those teams. And for me, I don't look at, you know, 16 teams or 12 teams make the cut. That's cool. Those tweet 12 teams made it. I'm thinking about number 13 and 14. Yeah. Because if they had, if this team that's sandbagging at the top wasn't there, now 13 becomes 12. And we all know we've been there. Before we got to where we got to, when you don't make any Sundays, and I'm saying you go 0-4 and, and you're just getting beat up, that whole Division 5 season, nobody will talk about all the other good games that were happening. Anytime that season comes up, it's going to be the stain that is on that season. This mm-hmm. guy purposely de- cheated the system you know, screwed all these teams over. And by, and you know, to be totally fair with that one, the guy's name that did it was Anthony. He went under Tony. So when they showed their driver's license to get their ID card for the season, naturally the people doing the ID cards, Michael, Mike, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of names like that. Jonathan, John, they didn't, you know, hammer down. Well, this, there's one letter off in here and the kid knowingly did it. Aaron was part of it because the crazy part, when you try to cheat the APPA, Chris is recording your IP address. Mm. That's a big one. It's not just oh. Marcelo signed in 13 years ago on Aftermath. The mm. IP address that's associated. So now Chris can go backwards, look at the IP address on any time that IP is signed into any account. And it was 18 that, years uh, ago, Mike. Yeah, totally. We might not have had it back then. So what, what I've never understood what an IP address is. Is it like for that particular computer or the internet or how does that work? Yeah, it's, I mean, for your computer, your cell phone, it has a unique address, a bunch of numbers and slashes uh-huh. and stuff that's yeah, way yeah. above my pay grade. Code. <laughs> that That is your digital footprint of your device. So no matter what you sign in as, Tyler Harmon and Mike Hinman or whatever fake name you do, they can track that device. And I'm sure, you know, that in a day of age of fake news and nonsense going out into the world, they can easily shut those accounts down. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yes, we're living in the matrix. We in the matrix. <laughs> yeah, and we're all on the ABC level trying to figure it out. <laughs> Let me get my tinfoil hat. Boom. <laughs> you got some tinfoil hat talk for us, Mike. What do we got? <laughs> yes. But luckily, we were able to catch it. And going forward, then you just looked at it and you're like, man, how far do you let somebody come back down the ranks? And we're seeing it now, right? Right. Like 40, That's- 45. I believe it's 45. When you had 45 in APPA, your points drop rapidly. Like Mm -hmm. two years ago, you win an event in D4, it's worth half or even less as many points. So now we're seeing these guys, and there's a look at like Shane, he's 50 years old. Go put him in D4 or D5 guaranteed trophies, right? Right. (laughs) Not like you're 45 or 50 or even older. You know, you know, Alex Martinez is still out there running around having fun. Mark Johnson's won it. There and both of those individuals are dogs. Like but we're we're seeing it now at the lower divisions and especially on the West Coast where guys maybe played in the NPPL, they had no tra- – Sean Walker's tr- tracking system was atrocious. Like, they didn't track anybody. So we have no data from that part. Then we have guys that have been out for 10 years, because I see it. Mm-hmm. Guys that have played WC mm-hmm. 13 years ago on DMG have now come back. They're not trying to sneak in. They've just been 13 years off, and their points are so low. If we let them go all the way back to D5, which at WC we don't. Once you've been ranked above D4, you cannot come back to D5. Mm-hmm. Is it just not? I personally game? like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. and like I said, no matter. And I'm sure for Podesta, it's more of an issue because of his son, right? Like at some point, Nico's going to rank up, and everybody. Here's the tough part about it, is everybody wants to have their glory season in D5 where they stomp everybody into the ground. That's just not a good look for paintball. We need parity, right? You want to see Marcelo's team win and Tyler's team win and Mike's team win, and you know we're going through the championship hut this weekend. I mean, short of Marcelo's team, which had the first three Pete ever in the history, sixteen years of doing this. Yo, there's so damn, I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah, there's never been a three Pete like that. <laughs> That's tight. So oh, yes. for us, you know, you want to have man. If you take seventh and cartel kids take this, you know, where it's very close. That's what matters for paintball. That it's actually mm-hmm. a race, not just you saying bolt thirty eight clicks ahead of us all mm-hmm. running the marathon. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Well. Dude, we appreciate all that you do in the game, man. And I know the community mm-hmm. does as well um, because you are a pioneer. You really are. And there's there's so much buzz around this sport. You know, we see it all over the place. It's in movies, shows. It's been on Sports Center a couple times uh, in the last couple weeks. You know, people enjoy whatever this crazy paintball game is. They're enjoying it, you know. And, and I know the numbers 
definitely took a dip after the 08 um, and we're still building and cultivating, but it feels like there's a lot of opportunity for the sport to grow in a lot of different ways right now. Yeah. I feel like the biggest word isn't really growing paintball anymore. It's probably retaining paintball, right? Yeah. We have to retain it. Cause you know, another one we did out at USXBL was we had a master's division three men. And there was so many old faces that came out of the woods just because they want to play paintball again. And yeah. they, you know, just like the WNXL, they want a division where they're not out there with these kids just getting run down. Like the WNXL pros don't want to be up with the NXL pros, right? It's okay to say it. Like they, people would like a division that they can feel they can compete in against like-minded and like physically bodied athletes, mm -hmm. right? So it was cool to see it come back because – there was a dude named Mafia from Addicted that literally 20 some years ago, I drove to an Addicted tryout, 10 man in the middle of Texas, cold, freezing. And he was the coolest dude, super nice human being to me. And like, I always wondered what happened to Moff, right? And I'll ask some of the guys around and they're like, yeah, he's around. We see him from time to time and walk up. He's wearing his red Addicted jersey. No you know, <laughs> whatever. And it was just cool to see him because we need, we need the young kids. We need the old yeah. guys. And as everybody, kid, we need everybody there you know what i mean so that was a cool thing to get to see so just seeing how we can link it all together and all be friends and be on the same level because we all love the same sport yeah no you're right man retain retention we need yeah. retention and you know when everybody's having a good time like you said the ogs are out there having a great time you got the youngsters you got the ladies you got the you know whoever's out and enjoying the game that retention and then sharing the game with other people getting new individuals out there to, to pick up a Titman 98 like I did when I first started or, you know, whatever, whatever you're going to be whipping around. Um, we it's just got to keep putting 20 balls in the air, right? It's about that one time that that one yeah. dot goes out and lands on its target. And yep. there's something special about that, right? For all of us where you're like, man, I got it. That's, that's what makes it. That's what you're thinking about driving home, right? Like, and mm -hmm. I saw that much and I saw it splash off. So yeah. Yeah, so you're yeah. right, the moms, the whole family. And it's interesting because when we were all younger, like we didn't have as much family involved in it as I feel we have now. Like you go to the WC, mm -hmm. there's moms, kids. I mean, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? We almost need a gel blaster playpen out there <laughs> for kids to play mm -hmm. in because there's so many kids running around there. So that's a very bright and optimistic part of our sport right now is that, you know, whether Marcelo's girlfriend's there or whoever – that we have our families with us because it's a lot easier when we're trying, you know, Thomas Taylor's whole family comes, right? Mm -hmm. The whole Taylor clan's pulling up to world cup. Like it's cool to have that. Cause for all of us that travel, when you're gone for a week or two weeks at a time and your family's not around, you miss them. You know what I mean? So now being able to make a family experience, any sport, we can turn this into a family experience, yep. a better chance of us holding on to this and keeping oh, it. Absolutely. People keep doing it. That's, That's right. partially why I, I love when your event is at uh, Ambush, you know, just having the cement so for people can walk around on cement instead of dirt. I think stuff like that is a, is a pretty big deal for spectators, you know, and for yeah. moms. For the and, fact that your feet hurt like crazy after five days of walking <laughs> those cement pads. I think I'd Ryan rather that than the Dust Bowl. Ryan said that he hurt worse after coaching than he did after playing an event and winning. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel that anytime that I do a clinic or I'm coaching all day and you're just standing around, I, I've always said that I've always said that I feel like my body's more taxed than when I play for the whole day, which is so strange. You know, it's, it's weird. It doesn't seem like that should be the case, but it absolutely has been been the case. Anytime oh. I'm just on my feet all day, I'd rather be running, diving, playing paintball. You feel better. No, but it's right. great to have great fields to do events at, you know, because yeah. everybody asks where the bigger regional events get, like MVPS does it at the same field all the time. You get to a point where where else can we do it, right? It's not a one field event. When you get into three or four fields like Texas, we've mm -hmm. talked with Fit. I mean, they're prepared when the time comes to put in a fourth field. But then you get to a point where if Texas has a lot of one, two field venues, but they don't have a lot of three and four field venues. So for us, right. we can only do so much. But Glenn and Wayne both have done a great – I mean, like, not many of them need – nobody needs four pads on a normal practice weekend, right? So ultimately, they're working with us to build this local infrastructure, which is, I think, what regional paintball needs to do. Tom comes – like, their setup teardown at the NXL is next level, right? They could be running a lot of other events at their efficiency level. But for us, it's more building the local infrastructure. Mm -hmm. and we wanted to go back to Battle Zone in Arizona, right? Rafi just doesn't really have the space or the want to do it. 
But if we had fields that we could work with to help them build their infrastructure, instead of you know paying fifty thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars like the NXL does to set up tear down that's money that you will just never see again to build that local infrastructure up, I think that's at least paintball in a better place, right? Which has to be every regional promoter or local promoters goal is to leave paintball in a better place when your time is up right you, mm -hmm. i came in it was here i left it was here we're in a good place i mean mm -hmm. every facet of life right like we want to leave our kids mm -hmm. in a better place our families in a better place we want to meet leave paintball in a better place so i think yeah. that's got to be the goal for all these regional leagues it's not just putting money in their pocket it's how can we build this up mm. that's profound man that's profound and uh you know, I'm going to talk to HK. We're going to get some bunkers out there. We're going to get the gel uh, strikers and have some of the youngsters out there running around and getting them dialed in for success. Because I know they're watching paintball, all the, the youngsters that go to these tournaments. And if they had like a field, a little mini field where they could play, NXL is doing it. We got to get the, uh, mm -hmm. the bunker set up at the Dub C. Come on down. Yeah, let's run it. Yeah, I that think that's sick. a huge, huge thing for paintball. Uh, just the fact that kids you know, four or five, six years old can play and, and not be afraid that in the, mm -hmm. uh, not speed soft. What are the, the low cal, the 50 cal, yeah. right? So yeah. you can evolve yeah. from, from gel blaster to 50 cal to, to a full paintball. I think we're going to be able to retain a lot, uh, more young players, which is huge. Or yeah. they're also to like turning down, like I was speaking with some of the parents in Texas on the young guns, right? Yeah. Like we don't need the guns at 300. We can turn right. them down to 270, 280. I mean, just common sense. Absolutely. Situation. Teaching these kids, don't go out there and look to put 10 balls on somebody. Mm -hmm. Like teaching that sportsmanship that it doesn't have. I mean, you know, for all of us, right? Like we're at practice, mm -hmm. somebody goes crazy and shoots the other dude 10, 15 times. And we're all just looking at each other like, what are you doing? We're all friends here. Like what? <laughs> We're training together. <laughs> this isn't trying to like crush this dude. You know what I mean? Like nobody wins a trophy. You know what I mean, Tyler? Yeah. Nobody wins a trophy at practice for getting into it with yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm. it just. Dude, I, I like, like it. The aggression. <laughs> yeah, but these kids, we don't want I know. to. I'm, you know what that's I mean? Right. We don't want them so, punishing each other. That's the most important bit of information I think that we could leave off of this show is, like you said, leaving it better, cultivating a fabric of the game, a respect of the game that that we can perpetuate into the future and have it be a status quo of this is how top level ball is played. This is what the pros do. We have respect. You know, obviously there's going to be moments. It's it's a high intensity, wild game that we play. Don't get me wrong. But we have to really have a big view on this and think about it properly. Otherwise, there's going to be the people with the big views that come in and look at it with us. And they're going to say, there's no way I'm putting my name on that. There's no way I'm putting my, my brand, my all the equity that I've built building this thing on that if we don't really think big and perpetuate yeah. it in the right way. So we have to be extremely mindful. And now more than ever, right now, you know, at, at cultivating that at our local parks, at cultivating that at the, the tournaments, the scenes, everywhere that we're at, we need to make this as professional as possible. Oh, we got to give people a reason to come back next weekend, right? Because if they don't have a good time and they're not having fun and there's not something to build toward, I mean, even when you guys are out, right? No matter whether you're sure. at Wild West or whatever field you're at, Tyler, like those kids look forward and we all did, right? Think back when we were Absolutely. young. Absolutely. We yeah. all looked forward to being up at Velocity for Marcelo and the guys mm -hmm. coming through, right? Like my dad was a machinist at die. All of a sudden, this new Diablo paint came back to the factory from World Cup. And it's like, man, there's a whole nother. And it was super cool, right? For us as a community, and it's every from edge to edge of the world where you play paintball, it is super important to give people hope and belief that they can be one of you someday or one of us or whoever they want to be, but have fun in the process. Cause if they don't have fun, same mm -hmm. with the pro division at some point, you just get burnt out on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think there's just, it's super important. I mean, watching teams win, lose, draw, but there's just, when there's that positive vibe in the air, super important. Yeah. Know? And we're yes, all sir. capable of doing it. We're all, and there's so many great ambassadors out there that go unnoticed and unnamed on a local level that are helping mm -hmm. from yes. California to Texas, to, to Florida, to the everywhere. And you know, our hats go off to those people because unfortunately they won't get much props. It'll mm -hmm. be the promoters like myself or all the other promoters that we're helping build tournament paintball, but really it's happening on a grassroots level. It's the guy that gives the headband to the kid. Yeah. It's, 
you know, phrase giving somebody yes. a headband where they're like, I can't believe Alex gave me this or, you know, Tiger where everybody's doing it. That's mm-hmm. the most important part, right? Like, may, and it's weird, right? Because you go through life and you don't see it or your months or days, years, and all of a sudden you see that situation arrives where you're like, yeah. You know, like watch Mark Johnson take his jersey off, just hand it to somebody. Well, I don't have any money for it. No, man, just keep it. Like yeah. it was just one of those moments, you know? So I think that's important mm-hmm. in paintball. And I think we're doing good with it. It's just, we yep. can always do better. For sure. And and I don't, I like, there's some big conversations around the game of paintball and the possibilities of it actually, you know, like you said, leveling up and becoming a little bit better known in the landscape of the world that there are professional paintball athletes. There are, you know, players in the world that really take this seriously and are driving this sport forward. And I hope, you know, that we can continue to see the athleticism, the smarts, like, there is so many smart paintball players out there playing really top level ball in all the divisions. And you can see this new energy, this new understanding of the game coming to life, which is really cool to be a part of um, because, you know, 10 years ago, uh, just, it wasn't at that level of cognitive processing where people are really running through a bunch of, you know, different things in their mind to make sure that the team comes out on top. But we see all the divisions, especially in the pro and, uh, you know, all the divisions are, are using that kind of tactic, which is really fun to watch. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's an interesting time, right? Like there's a lot yeah. of positive happening and I think we're all fortunate to be part of it. Yeah. Uh, Tom's going to the Sportel of Monaco. I don't know if you heard about that. He's going to go yeah, we, and like rub elbows out there. There you go. We, yeah. we talked about it when I was in Texas. I mean, you know, he's doing his best to pitch this sport to other, you know, brand people. That's why I'm, I'm sure you guys are going to want to get into it. Like the new format they had talked about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, I'm sure everybody's heard about it now. What Tom told me directly is he's not changing the format next year. This isn't a massive overhaul of the current system. That's right. They brought in a third party consultant, somebody that doesn't know paintball, but they do know TV, getting sports on TV and how to properly make it look good for the show. What that person said was that, you know, the current, there's just so many things in the current format of the mercy rules that we're using that it would be very hard for somebody that doesn't know paintball to come in and and absorb it. Mm -hmm. So they, that's where, you know, four quarters, basically four points, they're a, a scoring system on it. But for all of us that have been in this TV chase for 20 years, we've known one thing that if this thing gets to TV at some point, it will not be the format that we are used to. It will be a massively mutated version of it. That's That's why for a while there was the rage in the cage, three man in Vegas, Mm -hmm. easier to track, right? Three on three is easier to track than five on five. It's not going to be what we're used to. I mean, it was like, what was the taser ball that they all (laughs) did for a while? It's going to be something different. So to think that, paintball as we all know it is what it's going to be like when it finally evolves or if it ever evolves into there it's just not the reality is paintball will change and that happens every couple of years there's a rule change or a format tweak that you know people aren't happy about but then they play it and they become happier about it so mm-hmm. hopefully you know i mean tom's doing his best yeah he has an ownership group behind him that would like to see paintball move in a direction and they have to do it. You know, I mean, fortune favors the bull, right? You, you got to go for it. I think, you know, guys like myself are trying to keep the status quo going where guys like Tom and it's not, uh, there's nobody against each other. It's just, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to see and when exactly what he said is let's just see if we can get this thing there. Right. Who knows? Maybe we can, maybe we can't, but for sure we can't if he doesn't try. So mm-hmm. we're stoked for it. You know, I mean, I, yeah, they're, they're sending it at World Cup. We're we're debuting this uh, new format, and it's it like you said, it's not taking over the current format. It's just something that we're trying out because, like you said, there's a third party consulting company that's helping with the look that you know the networks want to see for TV and broadcasting. And I personally think that if you ask me my my opinion, I like paintball the way it is. I like paintball any way that will help the the level like. I want more people playing paintball is what I'm trying to say. I want as many people playing paintball as humanly possible. So whatever that looks like, I just love paintball. So (laughs) like, it doesn't matter to me. 
Um, I want to make sure that people are having fun playing paintball, uh, the industry's thriving, and that we continue to have this amazing game into the future. Personally, I think that if you add the shot clock, boom, we got the uh, two points, and then you uh, have no split deck. Maybe you do like another shot clock for like uh, the concession or something. There's fun ways that you can uh, speed up the game in its current format as well that I think would be very fun to watch. And it's like uh, we were joking around like football when they started creating the game of football and all the rules. They're like, all right, yeah, this is like a first down right here. You know, you go like 10 of these steps here. You got a first down. You get four more tries. We're still in the very early stages of of figuring out what this is going to look like. We're like baseball in the 20s. You know what I mean? Or like football when they were still dialing in exactly what it's going to look like. And we have a the thing to be mindful is of we have a long way to go. But just being open and, you know, supporting the game, I think, is the biggest thing. Because there's going to be opportunity and we're going to have to, you know, shift and move with the culture, with the times to yeah. if we want to if we want to try and get something on TV, it might look a certain way. And I I hope to God that we still have all the different formats. Like I like playing 10 man. I like going playing rec ball. You know, I want to play as much different paintball as possible. Yeah. And I think right now the interesting thing about like you pointed out the culture and the time where we're at evolving as a society in the grand scheme of things Mm -hmm. is cable tv has changed right we're not just watching direct tv anymore now streaming has has really taken over i mean you know direct tv's numbers hurt everybody's not cable numbers are hurting while streaming numbers are growing there's net and originally it was just netflix right and then more and more and more now amazon and everybody's got a streaming site so there's a need for a lot of content. And that's why some of the things you see on your streaming, like when you go look into the bottom pages of all that weirdness that they have, <laughs> that you're like, man, this made it on TV and paintball. Yeah. TV. So there's definitely a there's definitely a place for paintball. It's just what maybe it's on Hulu. Maybe it's on some yeah. other streaming service where they can record this, tell the story, you know, where they make. I mean, a lot of these things, Pawn Stars, all these things, there's always some side drama that's happening that we all yeah. know isn't really real, right? <laughs> reality TV. They're, the reality TV parts, but the issue that me and Tyler don't like each other isn't real, but they they need to add that in there because for something in us that mm-hmm. likes to see the drama. So, you know, in paintball, there's a definitely a place for them to record this thing, to be able to have episodes and the side stories and Mouse getting yeah. mad at this guy or who, whatever it is. To just, I mean, like Tito Ortiz was the master of it, right? In the UFC. Yeah. Yeah. People hate that dude. I've seen that dude multiple <laughs> times in Huntington Beach at Sushi on Fire. I'd never seen that dude not sign an autograph and get up and take a picture for a fan while eating with his family. Yep. Nicest dude in the world. You know what I mean? So I think in paintball, there's a lot of those subplots that they'll be able to tell. And hopefully Tom can do something with it. I saw a picture was yeah. it yesterday of him there meeting with some people in suits or something like that on social yeah. media. So hopefully, I mean... Listen, I don't think there's a better guy in paintball to do it than Tom if anybody can do it. Because Tom, from Kingman on mm-hmm. around, Tom's been around. Tom. Yeah. Who knows the game better than Tom does? Myself yeah. included. Nobody does. It's like he, he's the guy to do it. Inevitably, though, he'll always catch hand grenades. You know, Tom can sell $20 bills for 10 bucks and people <laughs> will still be pissed off. You know, yeah, yeah, some way. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, Mike, what you just hit on, that's what I believe we need to do better and focus on is telling the stories of the way paintball is already being played and enjoyed and, and competed. I I don't believe that another format change is the requirement. Um, and to say that the game's too confusing, like Tyler was saying, I think it's much more simple than football, you know, America's favorite sport <laughs> that everybody watches. You know, it's just people understand football because they've it's on every single, you know, channel. It's all over social media. People, kids grow up playing it. Parents are, you know, they take their kids. It's been around for so long that people just understand the game of football and you kind of take for granted how complex it, it actually is. Totally. You know, That's like an issue you have right now is I'm coaching, right? And against you guys, you're winning the point. And I just say concede, right? That now we're not focused on the field of play conceding. Now it's, you know, we're having to do it from the pit. Now another camera has got to come in, pick that up. Why did the coach concede this one? You know, I think the closest thing you would get is boxing, right? You could throw in the towel, but the fight's over when you throw in the towel for Mm -hmm. us to constantly have a sixth person off the field conceding that thing 
is kind of an issue right now. If I you're the last time with technology though, Mike, so easily we, we have a webcast, we have, you know, at the actual event, you can have a big light that goes up. It's the concession is not done manually. It's done electronically. So you know exactly when it happens, just have a big concession light that pops off. That solves that whole problem through technology, which always makes the sport even look more official, professional and, and cool, you know, like there's, but if you're the last guy or you're running and you need to save the clock, run out of bounds, right? If you're the last guy on mm -hmm. dynasty in a point, they're coming back. Mm -hmm. Just you're in the back center or in the corner, just run 10 feet out of bounds. It immediately stops the clock. It's over. And again, I believe some of these things, which a lot of us, when we first heard it kind of had a knee jerk reaction on, you stop to think about it just in the light of how do you get this thing to TV you probably want to dumb it down to its most simple form. And then if it can be picked up in the future, you can, if you really have hundreds or million people following, then you can add in new rules, just like the NFL does. Like you said, there NFL, NFL is a very complex set of rules and how backwards passes all mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. But we've, it's been ingrained in us, right? From the day we were born, we've been watching football. So we kind of understand it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have to probably go to most ABC basic level and then build our way up. Dude, March, you're not ready for this realty, like reality well, TV payment. I just want to touch you on going at it. I, I, I just know you are. <laughs> I just want to touch on, you know, it's funny. You bring in a, like a third party consultant that just doesn't understand anything about paintball. Cool. You can try to figure out what will make it watchable on TV, but he doesn't, he, that person. And I don't even know why I say he, it could be a she, but that individual clearly doesn't understand what the format they presented what kind of challenges could come just from that? I mean, talk about being confused when there's a concession. What about when it's four on four? There's nobody in one of the advantage bunkers and all of a sudden the game just ends because that period is over, that four minute period's over. Both teams just get up and nobody gets a point. That's crazy. That makes no sense. It's zero, zero. You don't even get the advantage bunker and you didn't win the point. Like, and there's only three of that in a, to me, that seems incredibly anticlimactic. It seems, uh, like viewers would be like, uh, that was, that was kind of dumb. That was kind of boring. Okay. So there, there was four people alive on each side and it's just over and it's zero, zero still. I, I would find that very frustrating as a fan. Yeah. But then again, we're talking about something that goes to TV that can, people can, and there's probably some analytics behind how long does somebody mentally clock into a game, right? Like mm -hmm. how long somebody's not going to sit there. I mean, soccer's tough. I don't know how anybody watches a 90 minute one, nothing snooze fest. I just, in America, we have way too much ADHD going on here. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Mike, I used to say the same thing until I actually went to a soccer game in person and, and like felt the energy from the stadium. And, and you, when you're at the game, you're really watching intently and just seeing the athleticism and the, what yeah. they can do with the ball is like amazing. Now, actually like Messi coming over to the MLS, I've been watching the Miami games because of the character, because of the individual, because of who it is, you know, and that's like all sports. If you don't have a reason to care, you don't watch, but if you have stories and, and players that you care about, you care about, it's just like F1 with the Netflix documentary that everyone brings up. Nobody watched F1. Now everybody watches F1, you know, everyone's into all the, all the, you know, racers. Um, it, it's the, the stories and the individuals that people are buying into that make them want to watch the sport. So, I, I just, it frustrates me that we spend so much time trying to change the game and changing all these other factors rather than telling the stories better of what we already do have. I think we're going to have the same issue. If we don't do a better job of telling the stories of the pro athletes and the top players and their, their, you know, uh, the travel and the experiences and, you know, who they are as an actual athlete, it doesn't matter what format we're going to play. People aren't going to give a shit. Yeah, throw, no, in, throw in a little bit of drama, a little bit of reality TV. Need the and drama. Bada bing, bada boom. Need the Got drama. <laughs> Need the drama. No, I, I agree with you on that. I mean, we'll, we will see. You know, there's a part yeah. of me that doesn't, that really questions if paintball can get to that level. I just, right. and I mean, I think that's a decision you have as an industry. Like, well, Tom's got to make, right? Like, which way are we going with this? Are we going towards TV? Or are we going to try, try to build the grassroots level? And I mean, I'm not saying both can't be done, but there has to be coming off of two back-to-back -back weekends. There's mm -hmm. got to be a lot of energy being spent by Tom and company people mm -hmm. within the company on getting this thing ready, which is why some of their media moves have been made, right. To go to more of a video. I mean, we're also seeing a time and I know I'll probably catch some hand grenades for this one, 
where still pictures are kind of becoming more obsolete or trending towards obsolete, where mm-hmm. live video clips, right? Yeah. I mean, first we started on Instagram, right? Just liking people's pics. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like now it's video. Now we're all sitting on the shitter watching clips for an hour straight of the most <laughs> ridiculous things that have nothing to do with our life. And you hear our grandparents scrolling. People are watching them too. Like it's the hooks are in us. So yeah. there's, <laughs> there's definitely a trend that's heading that we're evolving right into this right. new video, 10, 15 second clips. I know our social media is Ryan Polito and our guys that work for us are just constantly rye guy is giving us a lot of interesting data. It's, it, it's an evolution. So it's really going to be interesting mm-hmm. to see where we end up in the next year or two. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I think with social media alone, we're just in, we're in such different times than we were 10, 15 years ago. We five years ago. Yeah, we, absolutely. We are, it's, You're it's right. Quick You're life. right. You're right. Like this thing That's could why. blow up. That's why the paintball clips do very well on sports center when they post them. And I think that's why their team is seeing that and is continuing to post paintball clips. It gets better engagement. The majority of the surrounding, you know, I don't know if you've seen that Mike, but it gets better engagement than most of the surrounding reels that they post, whether it's of LeBron or, you know, some soccer player or baseball that, you know, paintball does well people enjoy seeing that most of that might be the novelty factor so you get like every paintball player shows out on those posts right now which thank you guys you know everyone listening to the show if you if paintball clips are are being posted on these you know sports center or espn or anything like that on social media like share comment subscribe that absolutely you know helps um with the engagement but that kind of stuff right there could bring so many more players into the game or just people that are interested and say how can i watch this what what's this about and if we had you know, really good stories to tell that people could see the clip on social media and then go and say, you know, watch a Netflix documentary on the top 10 players in the world or top 10 teams in the world and fall in love with the game. Like that's, in my opinion, that's where, that's where we need to be focusing our efforts. I, I really, really I don't disagree. believe that. I definitely don't disagree with it. It's just, like I said, there's only so much money for them to go around. I believe yeah. it's not like the NXL sure. shot a multi-million dollar, social media budget i've heard some of the numbers that guys are making and it's really not yeah it may not even be a full-time job for most people right so mm-hmm. perspective but you're totally right marcel the, it, for those of us on the back side of the curtain we know the interesting and even the interesting off-season plots like we're coming into yeah. another off-season that there could be i mean I, you know two oh Obviously, yeah what do you think well, mike's hot take this off-season what's what's going down it's gonna be the biggest move you already know Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> who do I not throw under a bus? <laughs> I mean, Marcelo, Tyler, we all know the names that are talking. You know, there's been some disruption in the in the universe. Who's mm-hmm. going to go where? Who's the usual every year talking to people? I mean, you know, I, there was some people at WC feeling other pro teams out for spots this this weekend. Yeah. You know, the talk has started, right? And uh, coaching changes, roster changes, who's got the money, who wants to spend the money. I mean, those are probably the first things you got to talk about, right? Mm-hmm. Will impact go into a massive rebuild, mm-hmm. right? I mean, let's be totally you no know, knock. It's just they paid a lot of money out for not impact like results. And I'm not trying to throw hammers at Dave or Bart or anything like that. I just yeah. impact is a organization that is expected to win right at least one win a season i think is a, a team like that that's the expectations right then you go into the other side of it who can attack your roster right because mm-hmm. you go addition by subtraction by taking any of you to another team that team gets better but dynasty gets lower just what it is right and then can dynasty continue to find the fountain of youth and again chris Shear, i think we all knew chris was a really good paintball player mike Urena had been relegated on elevation and I love Mike went to DMG for a little bit, then went to dynasty dynasty saw something in Mike that could be cultivated. And now Mike's name is being mentioned in back circles about like, man, I wonder if we could get him. I don't think Mike Absolute goes dog, yeah. I'm just saying you've gone from zero to hero. You know what I mean? And can anybody attack that roster? What's he going to do? Right. Two second places isn't good enough. But then again, you have an owner in Sarge that is the, one of the most loyal people there is, period, right? Like, he doesn't really cut many people. 
And I mean, to God bless him for it, right? Like as a team, if this was the NFL and Sarge drafted you, you know, you, as long as you're not just a complete tool bag, stealing stuff or whatever it might be, you are going to have a place on heat for maybe even longer than he should keep you on the team for because Sarge is committed. And it, people talk about family and culture and things like that. Sarge don't need to talk about it. He could just simply say, look at my pedigree. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do think that has also been part of the success over there as well, too. So it's oh. like a double-edged sword sometimes. You might think you could upgrade in certain pieces, but you have a group that believes the organization absolutely backs them. That that definitely means a lot as well. And then a layout comes out where you're like, man, this might not be a great heat layout. Or, man, maybe one of the greatest snake players we've ever seen, Chad George, can't play the event. Boom, here comes second place. You know what I mean? Like, he's definitely a good team to count out because the second you count them out, they're right in it right? Like mm -hmm. legitimately, what does damage do, right? Damage doesn't have to do anything. Chad wasn't at the last event. Holiday hasn't been there. So they have, Joey has depth. Mm -hmm. Plus mm -hmm. Joey's winning. Mm -hmm. And Joey's got deep, he, not, I don't want to say crazy deep pockets, but there's not a move if, because we all know the backside of damage, there's sponsor money coming in and there's CJ money coming in. And if CJ wants somebody, make no mistake, he will get them. Within reason, right? Like, unless this player just, I don't like that camp or I just have a bad vibe. But if it comes to a money thing, man, CJ can flex. Flex is big, you know? What does mm -hmm. X Factor do? None of us know, you know? Is Alex, how long does that keep going for? We just, we don't know. Can the Russians ever get all their guys back? The Russians can't get their guys back. Who do they go after? NYX has had a huge season. Nobody's mm -hmm. talking about Rich Telford enough, right? Dude, that Telford, guy, yeah. That guy's Agreed. mind is the most underrated mind. We mm -hmm. all know Rich is crazy smart. Rich, yeah. I go to Rich for advice. Let's just put it like that. Like, yeah. that's Rich <laughs> But who knows what happens with that one, right? Like, does Bo decide we need another snake player? It's not hard to say. I mean, CJ Cantor, these guys, Kraft, all their guys, everybody has done great on that team. But addition by subtraction, and like baseball has wins above replacement – could you get another top level snake player, you know, how, and how much money would that take? You know, so there's, I don't see this season being any quieter than any other year. And I could see more activity, how bad, and it's another topic. Nobody really wants to talk about right now, but our economy is heading into the toilet. It's been there all industry people and in paintball from where we started the year to where we're at now. It has been a downhill slope of sales paint still selling people are still playing paintball but gear sales are down and they're down big right so does that affect people is sponsorship getting cut back we know core a lot of their deals are based on business so do i think they're going to cut back a ton no because as long as you're still doing business those deals still stay in place but other people that aren't you know i mean i i've heard impact might have new sponsors next year right uh, just being totally transparent the magical get up, move over three seats, sit down and put that jersey on could happen this season for industry-based sponsorship and players, right? Mm. So it's going to be a, another crazy offseason here coming I up. I think we could see some moves quickly after Cup. If I was a GM and I had the money to do it, I would be moving quickly after Cup, right? Like for the top guys. I think there's a couple of A-grade guys you can get then as we go down to the B and C level guys, again, guys that can help you role players on a pro team. I think there's going to be some of them around. Plus, you know, after a couple of years, people tend to want to get up and make a move. I'm not saying everybody, but after two, three years on a team, people make a move. What does Travis do with infamous, right? He's got a strong brand. He's making money with it or some money, right? Like not like he's making millions, but we know Travis went after mouse two years ago. Does he go after, I'm not saying mouse, but just another big name player that can be the face of that pro DNA line, right? Yeah. Culture is a big smart. part of it too. You know, can Travis, yeah. does Travis have the culture that an A grade superstar would want, right? And you look at that in likes of like LeBron James. When LeBron left Cleveland, went to Miami, wanted to go be part of a superstar, came back home for the legacy. Then he went to the Lakers. It's the Lakers, man. Lakers, Celtics, <laughs> right? Knicks. Yeah. These are big organizations. Do you have that culture? That's going to be another big one, right? Marcelo and I touched lightly on it this weekend, just about teams and their cultures and who has 
a culture that could attract a super LeBron James is not going to the Charlotte Hornets, man. It's just not going to happen. Right. And some of these guys names that bounce around are not going to go to a team that may not be here in a year or the ownership isn't solid mm-hmm. or they don't believe in. So, you know, to get somebody like, and again, we'll just use you two again, there's no rumors that either of you are moving, but to get one of you guys to budge off your current position, it's going to be a lot of money and it's got to be, a serious bright spot of culture and opportunity to cement a legacy. And if you don't have that, I, and I don't think there's many teams in the league that do have that, right? Like energy elites throwing some money around. Allen's a great dude. I think we can all like, there's nothing negative you can say about that team. He's thrown some money at Keith Brown or whoever it was, but I just don't know if teams like that can get somebody to jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a tough one for sure. It is. It's, and it's, but it needs to be said, right? It's not like this comes from nowhere. It's just tough. Man, that top five or six teams is so good right now mm-hmm. that get somebody, one of you to leave there to go to a, to, and it's a clear step down. I mean, it's got to be a big bag. It's got to be a life changing bag. It's got to be an Oliver leaving dynasty type of situation when it comes mm-hmm. to financially, right? And I just mm-hmm. don't know if there's a ton of that money. It's not like the industry is going like this right now. It's mm-hmm. heading down. So where does that money now come from? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, man. We're going to see as we, uh, I mean, it's the end of October. We're rolling into Everybody cup. notice how both of you kind of clammed up on that one? Because everybody knows some <laughs> intel that we just cannot let out. Right <laughs> I just know that there's going to be a lot of exciting stuff. And uh, I love that we have a platform that we get to talk about it on <laughs> all off season. For everybody out there. Trust me, as the next two weeks go into three weeks at World Cup, there is going to be a lot of behind the scenes. You know, there's nothing like in other professional sports that t- stop me from talking to Marcelo or me talking to Todd or to Tyler or to Keith Brown or to whoever it is, right? Like we can, these conversations are being right. had on a large level right now between a couple of superstars that don't feel solid about the future of their franchises or maybe their legacy and are looking to create another chapter. And I think in paintball, there's some guys that have long resumes with one team and hats off to them. But like in the NFL, there's a lot of guys that spend three or four years here and go here for three or four years. And that their book of paintball will have many chapters in it. Mm. And again, like Joey Blute, I, I do talk to Joey. You know, Joey's the shark, man. Don't don't discount the top the guy that's won the last two events from possibly sharpening up his knife and going in a little war with some people and taking <laughs> players. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, Joey is not shy about it. Listen, Joey has ran the price on players up that he never planned on getting just by throwing numbers out there, knowing somebody else would come in and pay that player more, and the next season the team that paid player A more wouldn't have the money to pay other people more. Joey is. <laughs> He did it. He did it a couple oh, years ago. Like Joey is, awesome. Joey is active right now. Joey yeah. is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joey is probably the closest I to like, like Mr. Burns. <laughs> just like, and he doesn't have to. And again, it's not like Joey wants to replace anybody he has. But Joey's always like, man, you know, Rainy. Yeah, I mean, the Rainy story is an interesting one, right? Like mm-hmm. I asked Rainy, what happened with that? Like, were you just mad? And he's like, there were some decisions that were being made that I wasn't happy about. Joey calls. We have a good relationship just the right timing and Joey can get rainy and yeah, rainy's now damaged and winning and big ups to our old friend rainy, right? Like yeah. got to respect rainy when rainy's had the opportunity to go play on the best team in the world. Rainy consistently, in my opinion, takes the second or third best team in the world and wants to go there to prove that he could get them there. You know what I mean? And for, cause again, we all Absolutely. know rainy that offers from dynasty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. He could go to heat if mm-hmm. he really wanted to. Like Rainey's had opportunities, but he always takes somebody that's heading trending, but gets them over the hump. And just like him going to X factor to damage, I give Rainey a lot of credit for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. He, he wins everywhere he goes. It's no doubt. And I I don't think enough people noticed or were talking about it when he originally left impact. It it was a, it left a big hole there for sure. Yeah. A lot of people believe he left impact because he was kind of forced out because at some point he might, I mean, it's no secret that Rainey's physical issues, right? He's just not the biggest, strongest dude in the world, right? That he's had some ailments that at some point Rainey could step back. 
And if he did, there was beliefs that he might compete with Dave for his job. I mean, that was something. Wow. That he- I never heard that before. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Dude, huh. Listen, if Rainey says <laughs> after winning World Cup, I know you guys are both going to win it, but after he wins World <laughs> Cup, if he just said, hey, I'm done, do you not think Rainey, if he wanted to, would be a coach on a top five level team next year in the NXL? I, mean, I think absolutely. he probably could be for sure. Yeah. yeah. As far as strategy goes, I mean, he clearly yeah. understands the game and all the, all the top teams know that that's, that's like a big thing that he brings to the organization. I'm not saying there's going to be an opening for it. But yeah. If Rainey right. wanted to, if Nick Saban right. was stepping down at Alabama, Rainey would be going in there. That's mm-hmm. the level of human being that Rainey is too. Right. And I'm not saying Rainey's going anywhere or going to leave. I think every year Rainey's pretty burnt by the end of the year. But I think after he takes a couple of weeks back home, maybe some long poker tournaments, <laughs> then, you know, the the canines start to grow on that dog and uh, he's ready to go bite again, you know? So <laughs> but watching him at WC, right? Coaching a team that a year ago, the Scario guys were struggling bad, struggling to win a game. And then Rainey comes in, gets some multiple, po- gets some podiums, gets them right there. I mean, it shows really how smart that dude is too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All of us at the top level are decently smart guys. Rainey is genius level IQ. There's just no doubt about it. Yeah, that boy's a dog. Rainey is a dog. And to round out the dub C, Mike, um, just want to say congratulations again on everything that you've got going on over there. Shout out to AZ Pole Position. I got to show some love for the local boys. Yeah. Been working, uh, taking that. And then March, dude, the Vegas Golden Misfits just completely dominating out there. Um, so congrats to everyone that has been working hard because, you know, everyone's clocked in right now. Uh, we kind of hit on it with the uh, the new media stuff that's going on. And I want to bring that up with your media as well, because you've been crushing it with, you know, developing that aspect of the show for the Dub C. And the NXL just made some huge moves. We were talking about the third party consulting. Um, they have parted way with several big heavy hitters from the media side and um love every single one of them so it will be sad not to see them anymore but they've moved uh to hiring vince from let's talk paintball as the brand manager over there so congrats to him and in that role i don't know if is it just for world cup that he's doing that or is that going to carry on i heard the term interim come in but i think it's probably a let's see as we go situation is what i was i don't know vince that well i talked to matt a little bit after the fact just sending him a hey you know message yeah but you know, I think they're heading more into the video realm. I mean, the NXL is at the top, and Matt Engels did a great job getting them. They're the top dog, period, and there's really not a second place. But going forward with this whole TV thing, that's a big one. We know the Major League Paintball, the new name that Tom's got. You know, touching on the media thing, and again, this is not related to me, But the issue I believe the NXL runs into is that some people pay good money to be a platinum sponsor, which gives Tom and the NXL the ability to promote what we're all doing, right? Other people don't pay anything, but yet they pirate the video clips of the NXL and they use it for their advertising with paying no money. And I believe from what I was told talking to Tom that that, and again, there were some specific names, but it's not just one specific company. Many companies are doing it. And like, if we all make a YouTube video and we don't pay whoever we're using, whatever rap song or Slipknot or whoever it is to use their music, we can be sued. And likewise, I believe Tom is heading to a place where that that proprietary data, Mm -hmm. you need to either pay to sponsor, just like your guys' show. You wouldn't want me coming along or somebody coming along, pirating what you're doing. You Somehow you get nothing back off of it off of your hard work, but somehow somebody finds a way to make money off of what your guys are doing in your likeness. So I believe that's where Tom is heading with the media situation is getting things in place where they control all that data. And, you know, from the outside, some people scratch their head on it. They don't understand why, but you know, it makes sense to me why Tom's doing it. Listen, pay Mm -hmm. the money. You have access to the data. Don't pay the money. You shouldn't be able to advertise the data. Simple as that. You know, in the NFL, we talk about if Justin Herbert from the Chargers is doing a chunky soup commercial 
he'll have a jersey on. It may not say Chargers. It may be baby blue and white with yellow. And we think it's Chargers because it's kind of that color. Mm -hmm. But they're not allowed to use all the Chargers stuff because they don't want to pay to use the Chargers likeness. Same mm -hmm. in paintball. If you don't want to pay to use what the NXL and the NXL owners are doing, like, then, I mean, pay the money or don't advertise it. It's that simple, you know? And I mean, mm -hmm. again, like you said earlier, it's just the evolution, right? We yeah. make a rule, we make a law in our society. And then sometimes you stop and you're like, oh, I didn't even think about this person gets shorted or this person finds a way to manipulate it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Free from money from COVID goes out. Everybody and their moms using social security numbers or tax ID numbers that don't even exist, fraudulently stealing money from the government, then they have to go after them. I feel that's happening with Tom and the NXL and the Go Sports thing that they're taking that data and using it for their, you know, stores got a Lone Wolf, right? Lone Wolf is a platinum level sponsor. HK, all these guys are. Hormesis, all these people are, so they can use that. But there's plenty of other companies out there that didn't want to be a platinum level sponsor, but still want to ride the gravy train of what mm -hmm. the NXL is doing. So I see. It, yeah. It, again, totally different than a regional level. Like on a regional level, everybody's welcome to come out. I don't think any of us really charge any of these guys. We help promote them. But on the NXL pro field, especially, kind of, I mean, there's there's value in putting one of your two faces on a on an advertisement, right? Like when Tyler Harmon is running out to the corner, jumping over a can shooting, we know who that is. When Marcelo's got, you know, his look and playing his style of paintball, if we use that, it just comes to me with more mm -hmm. clout than just some regional tournament. So I think there's a lot of that happening right now from what Tom had expressed to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely making moves. And they got uh, J-Mac Photos and No Souls. Um, shout out to them. They're going to be taking over the the photo aspect and helping with the video as well. And then they have Enrique and Verb. Verbal will still be out there doing vid. And Rye Guy, of course, you know, Rye Guy Media. Shout out to Rye Guy and everything he's doing. So let's let's really, uh, you know, support all the media. There's so much great media. And shout out to the PTG Discord because we have a whole media thread in there where everyone comes together, shares media. Um, we really, I mean, without the media, we have no way of getting this out. So everyone show love. You know, and I think it's active. people understand like just sharing what they're doing, like whether it's verbal or, you know, any of the people, every single person, when you see something cool, share something cool. If you can yeah. tag them in it, if you can mention them in it, it go, you know, because all of a sudden yeah. one of you share something and I share it. Now my 5,000 and your 10,000, yeah. all of a sudden it, just exponentially grows and we reach a lot more people, right? Absolutely. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a big part of it, you know? And I mean, the media guys don't make a ton of money, right? It's a, definitely a passion project for them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's so imperative. We got to be out there, be active, be sharing and uh, support they the media. The story, right. They're the ones, I mean, look at that picture of Matt Blanco and his son at NXL Chicago winning him. Yeah. Picking, like, <laughs> tell me, I, I think a decade down the road, that's still going to be a top 10 iconic sure. picture that we have in paintball, right? Yeah. Like a father and son, that moment, the mud, like there's so much to that. I know a <laughs> lot of us could imagine us with our fathers out playing paintball in a situation like that and takes us to a place, right? So yeah, Man, yeah that's, it's, it's we, awesome. You know, we have to have, without them, mm -hmm. the tree falls and there's nobody there to record it. Did it even make a sound? Without the media people, we we need them all. So I mean, again, this is a lot of, and I think in paintball it turns into like civil warfare a lot, right? Like it's my side versus your side, and I think we all, myself included, at times need to try to step out of that and kind of head towards the middle. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, not go further to extremes yeah. with my side and your side. And it sucks when you don't win, right? But when you guys win, I still send the text. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Way to be, guys. You know what I mean? Like just that mindset probably would help. Yep. And I mean, I guess we got to talk about uh, the the news of you parting ways with AC Diesel yeah. and uh, and what that looked like and and just kind of why that happened, because you'll always be one of the greatest coaches uh, in history in my in my books. Mike, I think that you're just an outstanding individual, just a stand up guy that shoots it straight. And I can always appreciate that. So um, maybe is that could they not take this straight shooting or what happened there? <laughs> I mean, from what was said in the phone call that Mark and I had to what Mark's told other people now that, you know, it was something like that. People couldn't handle it. I mean, 
what's funny is you've been out of practice. I mean, I never yeah. raised my voice. You know what I mean? Besides telling yeah. people to calm down and not try to fight each other. <laughs> Marcelo's been at practices where things popped off. I was no part of it and refused to go get in the middle of it with. You're the voice of reason that that weekend. (laughs) You were the voice of reason that weekend. (laughs) Totally. So, uh, you know, I was told that results weren't there. I mean, the only Sunday they made was me. Uh, Last event, J-Rab was hurt. Malice's back got hurt early in the tournament and could not get into the snake. You know what I mean? He just, when he took his shirt off, you could see the muscle coming out of his back that had been pulled. No way. And Mouse tried to push through. Yeah, it was. Oh. I mean, you know, I'm a pretty tough coach, but when I saw it, it was like, man, this is. Yeah. Like, if we got to shut him down, let's just shut him down. You know what I mean? Like, this is not yeah. worth further injury. And, uh, yeah. you know, there's just some some tough situations happen. We know that Impact X Factor game that was one nothing, which is weird because there was no games anywhere close to that. Mm-hmm. I mean, off the record, b- both teams' players have confirmed that. That was a setup. We all know it was, so that's fine with me. I, I mean, we would have made Sunday with that. Tough, you know. I was told mm-hmm. our results aren't there, and they feel that's they wild to me. It it was objectively clear that Diesel's most uh, threatening event was Philly. Your first event with them, the team looked really sharp. Uh, was playing mm-hmm. very well. You guys were one point away from moving on. You know, against Heat, right? That game went to yeah. overtime or was one point game. Super close. Uh, and close, so who knows how that. Game. You know, and, and, he had and then issues with penalties that, you know, one yeah. guy's got six penalties in two <clears throat> tournaments yeah. and we still out there, you know, it's not my position to remove or cut or make, or that's ultimately the owner of the team's position. I'm just, from my point of view, I'm going to play the hand that I'm dealt. These are the cards that we have. Let's make the most out of it, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, I think uh, accountability is an issue for some human beings and that's okay. I mean, there's different levels of teams, right? Like there's friends groups that became teams. Then there's like many of the teams that you guys play on that are more mercenary. I'm not saying mercenary in a bad way, but we're picking up talent, right? It's like a professional sport. Marcelo might be from Canada and Tyler might be from South Central. And this dude might be from, you know, Miami Dade, Florida, but we bring this talent together to make a professional team. And I believe that's where diesel was heading by picking up the big names they picked up. And I think it's tough for Mark, you know, he picked up some guys and Mark gave them his best energy and effort and money. And there's a couple of guys that play a lot of paintball. And there's a couple of guys that don't play any paintball. And I think you both know that if you're not out truly training and grinding almost every weekend in the gym, I mean, if somebody's Mm -hmm. paying you a good chunk of money and you're not doing that, you're doing a disservice to the person, this case, Mark, that paid you some money, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, all any of us at the top ever say is how amazing it would be if we could get paid to where this was the only thing we had to do and focus on being the best player you can be. And some players have gotten pretty close to that, you know, and, and to not capitalize on the opportunity is, is a little wild. In my opinion, it's tough mid season, right? Rosters lock. We can't make a move. So now you're, you know, for me, it was a multiple year plan. I mean, you kind of say, This is the roster you got either guys and you hope people step up as a coach, right? You're not like, you don't have the deck set against man. I'm going to get rid of this guy or this guy. Of course. But when you stop and look at it and you're like, man, you're being selfish. Like we don't have clarity on what's happening here, you know? And I mean, there was discussions about other players. There was other guys that ownership wanted to cut early on this or mid season while I was there that I was against. And I know it's not personal with me and Mark. I mean, he thinks he can do it better. God bless, man. I'm not. I did it for free. I paid my own way. When he was gone, I helped get rental vans, do everything. And if that's where we're at, then cool, man. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Chicago is just such that's such a bad representation to not have J-Rab and then Mouse getting hurt is is really the the huge one there, especially with that snake and the way he was playing it. Um, We still want like Clint broke down the tape, right? We won 14 points. We lose 12. We have five penalties that four of them for sure cost points. Right. You know, I mean, it's just what as a coach and, you know, there's a negative vibe. I mean, people don't want to be held accountable. Where was the negative vibe? The first two events when you went one and three, you know, Mm. like it's just individuals. And I don't, that's not Mark. That's the people that Mark is entrusting need to step up for the team. 
talk's cheap, man. Talk's at an all-time low. They can tell Mark, oh, man, I'm going to do this. But the other side of that from where I come from is you, you have to show up, man. Can you imagine showing up to basketball with shoes on the wrong fucking feet, shooting free throws from the corner three-point line? You don't even know how to do your job? There's dudes that – and again, Mark and the, Mark is, you know, simply put, Mark – is in construction. He doesn't want to build the house. He gives his players the best hammers, nails, tools to build the house, to frame the house and build the house. Mark is giving these guys the tools. They are simply choosing not to use it. And they're making some abstract figure out of it instead of putting the time in. And that was a tough one. You know what I mean? And it is what it like, it always falls back on the coach and I'm totally okay with that. You know what I mean? I can leave that situation knowing like, man, I gave all that I had to it. I was at every practice. I was there days early, making sure we're good. Whatever was needed, I was there. And if other guys think that they can do it better, I, it's really not a personal beef. You just look at the simple data of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, all of us have had one-on-one -on -one conversation. Or not me. I, my phone just kept lighting up, man. I, you know, what, Marcelo, what was your initial reaction? This is a good move or a bad move? Yeah, I mean, I didn't agree with it. Again, like I said, I thought you guys, Diesel, looked scariest in Philly, your first event with them, and seeing you at the practices holding the team accountable is um, the team seemed like it was trending in the right direction. And then to not have J-Rab and have Mouse Hurt in Chicago, uh, I, I just I don't think that's a fair representation of of uh, the team and where it was headed. So, yeah. I mean, as a, as a competitor, I'm, I'm pleased with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> I'll say that. And for me, there's been a, you know, all of us as people, everybody out there, there's an evolution of a human being. When you're the owner of a team and you're paying all the money and you're watching your guys dick off, you know, drink, do whatever drugs they might be doing, show up, giving less than, and I'm a big fan of 100%. We all know Mouse's 100% is better than other people's 100%. It's just, he's a different breed. But just like in the NBA, I'm sure Michael Jordan's 100% was bigger than Steve Kerr's. But the coach still had to expect and demand 100%. Even if it was the 11th dude that didn't suit out on the bench, I need your 100%, whatever that is. And for coaches, when they're not getting it, it's difficult. you know. So in my past, I've, I've let my emotion and my passion get the best of me. But coming into this situation was way better because you're like, dude, this is your money, brother. If you want to spend a million dollars, we can do that. If you want to spend no dollars, we can do that too. There's an option for whatever you want to do and mm -hmm. just simply grading the talent and getting the grades back to him. So, you know, mm -hmm. and again, maybe that group of human beings needs something different. I'm okay with that. I know in a couple of weeks after world cup, I'll be back at the field, helping local kids become better players. I know when I look around, I don't think you can name a coach that's sent more guys up into the top echelon of paintball. And also, as much as I think I get a bad rap for being too hard on people, when you have dudes like Danny Parks that was out at the field after 10 years of not playing, walk up and be like, man, you taught me so much as a man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How to like, because yeah. what we preached on Aftermath really translates. It was never like, hey, Tyler, go be a scumbag, dude. Way to be, broski. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's like, no, man, be a good human being all the time, 24-7. It. You, yeah. there's always somebody watching it always matters yeah. you know what i mean so i'm, I'm cool with it like i i, well, I, I mean, wish that all mouse and all the guys on the team the best of luck at world cup like i'm thankful not to be going to world cup i don't know about all <laughs> that now mike no. i mean it's fucking all world right. cup world cup is gonna be the dopest <laughs> it's the first holiday of the holiday season come on now it I'm is being on the road for 14 days straight coming <laughs> off and just and you know my youngest son colin is in high school now but like I still have to drive him to school every day. Being gone that much is a lot, right? Like well, I, yeah. I mean, Trey, big Trey, as we call her, Tracy, my girlfriend. Big Trey, shout out that name. But uh, <laughs> you know, she's here to help. But being gone for two weeks is tough. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, I can just say for myself, if I'm not needed, I'm plenty needed here. You know what I mean? And like, I would rather, you know, all the discussions that get had at World Cup, I'm having on a phone. I, Tom Cole and I had these discussions two weeks ago, mm -hmm. right? Cole and I have had these discussions weeks ago. So for me, and the Go Sports is so good, I can sit here and be watching you guys <laughs> play every point, all the angles. It's not like, 
you know, yeah. I'm getting yeah, a graph right. from the score update. You know what I mean? We're real time on 82 inches watching it in the living room. You know what Let's I mean? Let's go. Let's so. go. Mike, Mike, is there? You're an asset. Like, that just has to be stated, man. You're an absolute asset uh, no matter where you're at. And I think um, definitely not having you at World Cup is going to be strange, dude, because um, it's just you, you're such a big part of the fabric of paintball. And I think that uh, I, I would have liked to have seen you at World Cup finish it out. And then maybe after a cup, you know, whatever, it goes separate ways. But, uh, man, it, it's definitely going to be a bummer that, that you're not going to be out there. So you will be missed. And yeah, uh, some you're calls an absolute came in afterwards to go help other that, teams. That's out. what I was going to ask. Do you have yeah. your eyes set on any other teams or would uh, would any other teams interest you? I mean, the call multiple calls came in to help with staffs, you know what I mean? But yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to go coach against guys that I coached with this year. You know what I mean? Like, I feel that mm -hmm. just saying, I'm not saying they're in their bracket, but just better to let it yeah. be. For well, also season. you've been on a, a bender, you know, getting ready for dub C all this work. You just finished that whole thing out. And now you can, you know, you're an asset at the household too, man. You know, they need you there. <laughs> Dude, I, I enjoy going to sushi almost every night or <laughs> somewhere with my two sons and Tracy yeah. and our family just doing that so but maybe in the future I, you know my thing is this i have a lot of friends out there and if my friends call and need a hand then of course i'm going to be there you know what i mean but for me like i feel like my legacy is pretty well cemented in the industry and it's tough to do the coaching thing and be 100 percent in that and then also the league thing because i do believe we're going into 2024 between usxbl and wcbl we're going into a tougher economy i mean mm -hmm. talking to a lot of teams out there the big organizations Absolutely. that have six, seven lines or whatever. I believe there's going to be a retraction. I think things are going to shrink a little bit. I think some teams are going to cut down a little bit. So I for agree. us being more focused into 2024 on making a business plan that is sustainable is super important to me. You know what I mean? Like you can't, yeah, I can eat some losses, but at some point, we shouldn't be building businesses that are unsustainable that we know like the old NPPL that when it went bankrupt, there was no notice. The doors were chained after Thanksgiving and that was the end of the NPPL. And, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to be that person. I want to be very hyper-focused mm -hmm. on my leagues in Texas. And we have a lot of growth coming in Texas. We know there's a lot of teams committed to coming back to the USXBL. It had been pretty well ran into the ground years before I was there and just mm -hmm. focusing on making that part of it better. And hopefully we see a lot of the, and Texas is different, right? Those teams can get to the NXLs easier. It's a two hour flight to Orlando, two, three hour, two hour flight, three hour flight up to Chicago. There's one in Texas short of Philadelphia. That's out in the middle of nowhere for most of us here in the real <laughs> world. Like there's four events that the Texas teams can get to very easily. So working with that, getting Tom's dates, you know, the first one's going to be Vegas early March. WC probably won't have its first event until early April, a month after that event. Because for us, you got to teach it how you preach it, right? Like you can't say, I want to work and I want to grow paintball and then have an event two weeks before the NXL. And, you know, us both fight for the same teams that can't afford to do both. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for us, just planning, making it all fit next year. And, you know, Marcella, you've been beating the damn drum for so long on two weekends of practice that if this guy goes back to that, dick, that, <laughs> <laughs> that you know that would be 15 weekends of paintball that all regional events have to be aware of and then you know just normal holiday fourth of july mother's day we can't do it then like mm -hmm. weekends that we all have to stay away from the schedule is going to get a lot tougher for everybody divisional teams at the nxl should have a blind layout there i said it <laughs> i'm not against it and the pros play a different field Work out the damn logistics. I know Tom says, well, if, if the pro field goes down and we have to move games to the other field, that literally hasn't happened ever. Maybe Galveston 2012. So like, let's stop planning for that. Figure it out when it, when it comes, but let the pros practice for multiple weekends and act like professionals and let the other teams have their weekends. Well, I think the blind layout does one thing like the NXL is there's I, we, it's hurdles. You have to get over to play an event, right? Hurdles mm -hmm. that most of us don't deal with anymore because we don't pay the entry fees. But for a divisional team, they have to pay that entry fee. And that's a big hurdle for them to get over. Mm -hmm. And then you have a one or like Marcelo has been talking about two weekends of practice where most people are using 60 to 80 cases of paint. And depending on what you pay at your field, sometimes that paint bill for those two weekends 
becomes more than that entry fee does. So now coming into it, you've got this massive paint tab. Not everybody's got Papa Hinge paying for it. And then you have that entry fee and the flights and everything else. Every team out there at some level, I think, wants to play NXL. And mm-hmm. that's a good thing to say. You'd be an idiot not to think that these people don't want to play NXL. Mm-hmm. But we're getting to a point like, Tyler, you got kids. I got kids. Marcelo, you got a girlfriend. Like, man, if that takes all of our money, and we've all done it before, but you start looking at your family, like, I'm truly taking away from my family to go play paintball. I just don't, I can just go to the local field and shoot some paintballs, have fun, have, you know what I mean? Not as fun as an NXL, but I can still stay in the sport without breaking myself. And that becomes a major issue, right? For a lot of these players. Certainly. So I think, you know, hopefully the NXL at some point can go to a blind layout. Now you don't, I'm not saying you won't practice before, but what if you have a wedding or a kid's birthday or something the weekend before, two weekends before when it's better for our die kids or, you know, whatever team you team you came from shut up we're trying or golden the vegas guys maybe sean's got something to do with his wife right and maybe the weekend before is not or his daughter has a birthday we can practice two weekends before and get a good grind and feel better prepared for it but when you have two a one or two weekends allowed you feel like you have to go play it i have guys coming to wc they're like yeah i haven't picked up my gear in three months just Gonna go play paintball, and at a regional level and a divisional level, I think that makes a little more sense. Hmm. I, I would, I would venture to say, if the NXL did that, I could see more teams playing their events over all five events. Right? We just show up, walk the field, play paintball. I mean, also it teaches people a lot more, right? Marcel, I think you've seen it. Watching at WC, these younger players have to understand where can we get to stay alive, learn this field, and by the third or fourth match, then yeah, Marcel- absolutely sending dudes to their side of the field on the break, truly mastering the chessboard. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think doing that would really help. And also you see more variation in paintball. And I will use the pro division two years. Was it last year that we had the two minor events last year? Yep. Dynasty sucked at Texas, right? It's not that we know they don't suck. It's just that Mm -hmm. layout was not good for them. And then the Ironmen, they got beat up pretty well all year, got second in Sacramento. And I guess the question becomes for all of us, where do we want to draw that line? Because the NPPL days, you know, like Dennis Olson's team, Chicago legend with Jerry on it, Damian, those guys. Yeah, dogs. Like that team, to be totally fair, would never win a PSP event. Not at the pro level. But in that seven man where there was blind layouts, right? It was a blind layout or you got it the week of, but nobody practiced the layouts because there were so many different layouts on the fields. Everyone was different. Mm -hmm. There was just more variation and chances to win. And I know for the guys at the top, that's not as fun. Mm-hmm. But for the 10 through 20th place teams that are lucky to go two and two and maybe squeak into a Sunday and then just get beat up there, having something that anybody, like again, the Ironmen pull a second out. Because they're just out there wheeling and dealing. It's what style of paintball you totally. want to see happen in the future. Yeah, you know, that Texas event was was strange and I think highlighted something that is, is a little unfair in the in the blind layout. Uh, format and it was we missed Sunday by one point so who knows if we if we you know squeeze in and and have learned the field a little bit better but our first match was against X Factor and X Factor had already played a game so I know you can make the argument that we get to watch a full set but I'll take being able to actually play a match over yeah. over watching right so you're it's a blind layout but not for one of the teams in that in that regard you know and so your first match you come out and you're at a disadvantage because you haven't even been able to be on the field yet. The only way you can get around that would be to go to a six-team bracket where all six, one plays two, three plays four, four five right. plays six, just for argument's sake. Right. Everybody plays in the bracket first set, but the second you have a five-team bracket, one or five or whoever doesn't play that first one is going to be waiting for one of the other teams to come yeah. in and go. But, I mean, those are things that can be worked out. And I again, guess I'm back to just amount of money that the industry wants to spend right. to prepare for an event and – at the end of the day, Tom Cole's event doesn't need a bunch of practice. He needs teams to show up and support paintball to drive the money to be able to pay for this thing. I guess that you could have a blind layout and offer it, uh, offer teams the ability to practice it on Thursday like we do now. If you just release no. the layout Thursday morning. But especially no? for the pro guys, I don't think that's an issue. You know oh, what I mean? Right, I, right. I don't think that's an issue to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just, listen, so, no matter which team it is, and I know with you guys, 
Marcelo, money is not a huge factor, but it's a reality, right? You don't have an unlimited budget on the team. Mm -hmm. But if you have two weekends of layout, and how many teams do you guys really want to practice? Three, four, five? And if you got a couple in your bracket, you probably don't want to play them. Talking about top-level teams. Mm -hmm. None of us on the West Coast are flying to damage to practice Joey. Joey mm -hmm. and his guys don't travel a lot. So we're lucky to go to X Factor. Maybe we go to Wasteland and catch heat. It just financially, it's cumbersome. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's big. It's a lot of money. Like Mark, you know, when we were talking about practicing damage, like do we fly home for a day or two? And it's like, why don't we just do Saturday, Sunday, Monday? Take Tuesday off. We're doing the thing on Wednesday. So you're not paying for 12 flights for a staff to get in and out, all the rental cars and everything like that. It's just expensive. And I know at WC, people love the idea when we put a poll up on blind layouts or not blind layouts, I'm like, it's going to be close, right? 60, 40, 55, 45, one way or the other. I really thought it was going to be, it was 80 some percent blind layout. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. Divisional players love the blind layout aspect. And, and I've, I've said this for a long time, even though I'm a you know, strong proponent of having the layouts for, for pros, I support it for divisional players. It makes a little more sense to me. I, I think you know, and my reasoning for that is that I, I think it brings a little more luck into the game. You know, I understand that there's something to learning a field on the fly and that does or should show experience. But at the end of the day, the more time you give high level players on a field, the better paintball on that field you're going to see. So for the pros, I really like more rather than less. But for divisionals, I see no reason in not having well, if it's more affordable. Though, is what is better paintball for the spectators? Is it you? And I agree with you. If yeah. you give a layout to both of you over the 19th and 18th place teams, you two will absorb it as a faster rate than the lower ranked teams will. But is that what's better for paintball or is it for, I don't know, FSU notorious to pull an upset on one of you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I honestly don't know the answer to that because I, I think as far as and I'm speaking personally and I've talked to other pros as well, some of the really high level moves you see are learned through practice whereas the blind layout like smart players are a little more they're not just going to make a dumb decision they're not just going to try to have some luck and just go for something so you i think you actually see less dynamic moves in a blind layout than you than you would with giving these high level players some time to absorb like mouse he'll break down exactly what he wants to do on a field and he learns that in in practices and then come tournament time you're in the snake heads up with him. He knows exactly when to come down, bunker you, and shoot the other four. And that's exciting paintball to watch. The other side of that is Texas. I'm watching Team Elite play in the semifinals. Charles Dean that owns Max. Four guys alive against him. Just goes right through the center. He read the lanes. Guys were looking outside. There was no safety back through the center, like stopping an up-the-middle move. Mm -hmm. Dude goes and gets the first body, and I'm expecting to see his body implode with paint, get riddled <laughs> up like it was Scarface. Shoots another dude, shoots another dude, tees off on that guy, sees fire, hits the buzzer. <laughs> and, you know, like I've seen it both ways. And again, for the pro so, guys, mm -hmm. there's a reason to have the practice. Mm -hmm. But the other side of it, I mean, it's a lot more money that could be going other places other than wasting a skid of paint on a field. And I think by, by the time you get into Sunday, the top teams are going to know how to play the field because then everybody's going to be there watching, even if I'm not playing. I'm going to be watching skinny Kevin. I'm going to be watching Todd and see what everybody else is doing. And I just feel there's more variation of what, and I agree with what you're saying about mouse. But then again, if mouse doesn't think the guy in the California is watching over him as the safety mouse might just hop that highway and run down and go to work on some people. Right. Like it just, mm -hmm. the current format becomes an issue. When you have four games, three and one, we know we can make it in two and two becomes a nightmare. So the current, like if we could ever work that format where you have a fifth game, maybe a little less points, but more games, it's like 10 man, right? When you do a 10 man tournament, it's way more fun because you play eight games. And if I lose to Marcelo's team, it, I can still make it in. If I lose to Tyler's team, I can still make it in. With the current four teams, when you, let's be real, we've all been there. You lost one, you lost two. Now you're going into Saturday. Like, dude, we have to play razor sharp and this is all the way through the divisions we have to win and we might need some help on it right like scores the other way just to slide us in It'd we've gone three and one and been the wild card i watched the team at texas shut up we're trying to go three and one and get knocked out <laughs> on the nxl rule book on how many teams to take yeah so it, there's just a lot of pressure on our current format with how we win like you have to win it's, you can't develop like you 
like even on your team, if you say Skinny says, hey, these are one through eight, and Damian Vasquez got two points his whole career there, right? Like, I'm not trying to be like garbage points, if you will, in the NBA. You can't develop because every point is so important. That's I totally agree with that. I mean, that's why I actually think the other direction rather than less, you know, I get more teams that you play against, but longer matches again would accomplish that. Like back in the day, we had, you know, 15 dudes on the roster. That's the reason Mouse and I even got a shot at 16 years old on the Ironman because you play so many points that there was room to develop, you know, uh, now you're, you're absolutely if you catch two tough teams in your bracket, doesn't matter how long you play. Dynasty going to whoop that ass or he's going to whoop that ass by five or 15 or whatever it is. But if you get more and some teams just stack up differently against each other, right? Mm-hmm. Some teams line up where heat will just run through this team and other mid-level teams give heat a much tougher game. And it's just how they play the field. Mm-hmm. And what is yeah, where Tom with this new format, I believe the original talk was if they were going to cut it down on points, you would play an extra match. I don't know if they're going to do that at World Cup. I haven't, I'm no part of any of that. But that was their talk is to cut, if you're going to cut the points down, give more matches so you have more variation of teams just so you can see more train wrecks. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cause it's only three points. It's, it's three four minute periods. Is that what it so, is? Now, I, I originally heard it was four, but maybe it's three. Yeah. Tom, that's, that's what Tom said on, on the show was it was three four minute periods. Um, so, 12 minutes of total game time at the most, right? But you could score one of the points in, in a minute and then you go into the next period. Um, Mike, did you happen to hear my uh, idea about the, the you know, quote unquote shot clock to where if you score a point at any point in a match in 30 seconds or less or 24 seconds or less, time is, we can debate that. It's worth two points. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that. I also go back to on the West Coast, we had the red zone. John. Yeah. 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 I, is. And I mean, it wasn't huge out here, but the problem became is Tyler beats me three points in a row, just blows me off the field. Doesn't hit the buzzer. There was a buzzer that you could hit, which is kind of right. like what we're doing here with the three and the seven points or whatever. Right. They had talked about a bunker that you can keep, like it's a field goal or whatever. I understand that keeps people moving, but watching his format and I coached a couple of teams doing it where it was like, man, Tyler dominated us. He just dominated. But this one point, we shot two of him on the break. My guy went up, hit the buzzer. Ten seconds later, he hit another buzzer. And points, you know, one breakout became more valuable than the other three breakouts that Tyler won. So that was the issue with that. And again, not naysaying it. I'm just practically applying it. I've actually seen a format play like that where Tyler wins three out of four. But because there was, you know, one point, another one is the scoring real quick to PSP days, it was two points for a win, one point for a tie, no points for a loss in match. In the matches, yeah, right. So now we run into this issue where it's five points for a win, one point for a tie, no points for a loss. My issue with that is Tyler and I tie each other, so two points are awarded, one for each of us. But the other games, if he wins, it's worth five points. I think in general, when you have a game that is worth more or less than another game, you could run into an issue. And where we see an issue with that at WCBL is we didn't, we don't currently have overtime in prelims. You watch WC teams go three ties and a win, get eight points. And then another team goes two and two and knocks them out where they actually lost to. I think you, for me personally, I would like all games to have equal value. Like the NFL, if you throw a hundred yard touchdown pass, is it worth 14? If you kick a field goal in fantasy football, it is <laughs> in fantasy football is worth more. <laughs> you get the I multiplier of those pop up this weekend. And <laughs> I was cheering from the sidelines. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, that's again, not trying to be negative about other ideas. It's just when you practically apply them, you kind of run into an issue there. Well, on, I, and I agree I got, with you. The team <clears throat> needs points. They run down and yeah. that's what we want to see, right? We want to force action. I believe that's what they're trying to do by putting a bunker on the, fi- this is what I had been told early in this idea that there's going to be a 50 yard line bunker, maybe different color that if you make it there and you hold it, it's worth three points. Correct. But again, if we get people close to the 50, if damage has to run up there, they can't be in that shell that they do, or even dynasty, you guys do it where you just lock the field up and they wait for them to come in. It's just not exciting paintball, right? That's, that's what I think. Yeah. The, the thing about the two points in under 30 seconds or 24 seconds is one, it's a really difficult thing to do. Uh, it's rare that points happen like that. So it's not like it's going to happen all the time, but teams could open up a match with a quick point, which is exciting to watch, you know, and 
it doesn't change the fabric of how the game is played. And you get to the end of the game, it's five to one with a minute 10 on the clock. The game's not totally over. It keeps the viewers still excited. It's like, you know, in the cool. NFL, two and a half minutes to go, a team might be down by two touchdowns. But if they have the ball, like it's not really over. The starters are still in. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I, I think it's at least better than the, the format we're going to be testing at cut. But I did say I would keep an open mind until after we actually play it and see it. <laughs> I think Tom will be able to take the data from what you guys do at cup and then possibly continue to transfer. I mean, yeah, when I talked to Tom, just so everybody knows, Tom wasn't hard line selling this thing. It wasn't like, yeah, gotta be this way. Gotta be this way. Agreed. He's just like, we're Let's trying try something new and hopefully it works. And if it doesn't, we'll take the data from it and hopefully we can learn from it. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All failures in life are learning experiences. If you choose to look at it that way. Absolutely. Absolutely man. hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll just keep developing and rolling with it and, uh, you know, keep having fun shooting that pain out there. Uh, can't wait to see everybody at Cup. It's going to be a Damn. crazy tournament. It's going to be, I mean, could be the biggest one in history. I know last year we had like a hurricane that kind of threw a curveball, but I think this one's going to be pretty popping. It was like the only hurricane they've had in November, right? Tom yeah. purposely moved the events <laughs> into November just to stay away from the the ass end of hurricane season and yeah. still caught like the only one, which is the new world we're living in. Mm -hmm. But hopefully it's a much world cup can also get tough that time of year where it could be like 80, 85 and humid. Mm -hmm. Or we've seen like back in the day when Marcelo's with aftermath, we're playing Titman effect and it's 60 degrees out there and like a bit brisk out there. So mm -hmm. thing to see what Florida you guys get. Yeah, I will say, yeah. I, I feel like the last couple of years since it's been in November, we've had amazing weather outside of the hurricane. You know, once that Thursday was over, Friday, Saturday, Sunday were beautiful. And then the previous years, the weather's been really good versus previously, like in October, it, it would, there were some times where it was hot. I don't remember what year it was. Was it 09 when Zach Wake had to go to the hospital? Yeah, I, it was 09? somewhere around there. Brutal. Yeah, brutally hot, brutally hot. <laughs> so, Oppressively hot. Yeah. <laughs> Hinge, before we let you go, we got to dive into the Discord. Everybody knows the rules. We got uh, yep. tons of awesome Discord questions. You're uh, always a fan favorite. Everybody always They're has the good out. ones for you. Yeah. We'll start with uh, Colonel Panic. This is one of the AZ pole position players. My question for Mike, do, do you have any plans to have the US XBL and WCPPL winners to play an exhibition match for some wild prize? Also, thank you for running event for this weekend. AZ pole position loves the WCPPL. At this point, no, I would going into 2024, if our economy was on the upswing and people were feasting right now, personally, I could see us doing something where we put two events together and you bring everybody together for the like, not even the championship, but more of a amateur open style tournament, right? Because that's what we do have as amateur teams, like a one off event. But just currently going into 2024, I think it's tough to push that, right? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like with what he said, it's a great idea. It's just so we have Cartel in D3 that just won the championship fly to Texas, or do we have Texas fly to California or to Washington to play them? It's just it's a logistical issue with teams that don't have the biggest budgets right now. But I think down the road, as we continue to hopefully grow, right, mm -hmm. is to bring everybody together. And again, I think the second you say that, it's like, well, you're going up against the NXL. And it's like, man, only a small-minded fool would think that, right? Like, I'm not mm -hmm. going up against them. There's plenty. People play for USXBLs or XTPLs or BunkerFest and play other people's leagues. I don't think we should ever be in a place where we make people only do one and not the other. Mm -hmm. I think we should be a little more open and have fun, right? Like, if we all grew up next to Pebble Beach, we'd still want to go play another golf course just is what it is for sure that's our long-term goal with that love that all right we got jay lamb uh mike in your opinion what is the best way to keep your team consistently competitive you got to find people with passion right that's the life that's that's what drives us all when you see people out there through all the divisions that are that are making excuses why they can't be at practice why they can't be out on saturday and sunday doing drills or Marcelo, I see you out during the week doing drills at ASG with Rainey, Fedorov, and all the other usual suspects of the pro division that are out here. You know, when you're making excuses why you can't as a team, and that's Justin is who that is. I know who that is. You got you to gotta start making a plan to move on 
from those people. Yeah. Unfortunately, and it's tough. You know, it's tough. Like myself, I grew up with Fish and Mini Mike, and we just got to different as we evolved through the game together. Got to a point where, you know, Fish didn't really care to play paintball that much. Neither did Mini Mike. And I had to keep on my path. And, yeah, you know, true friendships will always be there. But you got to really look at what does everybody on the team want. I hear so many team owners at WC, like, you know, Buddy from Vegas Brawlers, like half our D5 guys didn't even show up the weekend before. And now they're here at the tournament. You just have people that have different goals in life, right? Some, some people want to get to the top. Some people just want to have fun doing it on their own pace. And that's okay. It's just when you have people that have different, uh, you know, Marcelo wants to play four days a week and he's dragging me out of my house. And I'm like, dude, I just don't want to do this. You know what I mean? That's where the difference of an opinion and the conflict usually comes from in teams. So for young teams, finding like-minded, passionate people that want to be there. You know, for me, I always look for the first kid at the field. Who's going to be out there helping me blow up bunkers that I'm not having to be like, yo, where are you at? We're 30 minutes. You're 30 minutes late. Like if I have to drag you out of bed, just stay in bed, man. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. Yeah, man, Mike, well said. And this question kind of is a play off that, but our man Kyle Breath says, hey, Mike, in your experience, what are one to two things that separate good divisional players from great divisional players? I mean, anybody that's got two ears and one mouth, right? People that listen twice as much as they talk. If you're a divisional player, by definition, these two guys up here don't know your name. And why don't they know your name yet? Because you haven't earned it. You haven't proved it yet, right? You haven't been consistent yet. So I think, you know, for young players listening, man, like, and I think it's a, a culture thing these days. A lot of kids want to prove how smart they are. You know, like you come hang out with me and my sons. You see Colin really saying much? No, nah, he's, he's chilling. Watching, he's <laughs> watching the room because the loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the room. The empty can rattles the loudest. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, with these young players, like just shut up and listen. There is, and it's weird, right? Like when we were, when you guys were young, when you were up on Bob and you were with me, Marcelo, the only way we got this intel was by going to the local field and getting beat up by these guys on the field. You know what I mean? Now with these podcasts and the clinics that have been out there and the clinics that are on YouTube that you can listen and watch, you know, if you're a young player that's at the NXL and you're around the pro pits or something like that, just absorb it all. Listen, watch what these guys are doing. Watch what makes Tyler Tyler. Watch what makes Marcelo Marcelo. You know, and now take a, a big a piece of that as you can back home to your local team and be better, you know? I just, it's simple as that, man. Like, be a sponge. Realize that you're on a, you're on a journey. And for a lot of you, you think that journey is going to end next year when you go pro. It's not. You know, every young kid that comes into the pro division, like Connor Kelly when he went to your team, and I had been messaging him before he accepted the deal, right? He asked mm -hmm. me what I thought about it. I said, I'd go in there and just shut my mouth for the first year because you have mm -hmm. so much. I mean, from the Russian guys to yeah, yeah, to you, to just every Ryan Moorhead and Sam, like there's so many different facets on heat. Just mm -hmm. listen, observe and absorb. You know, and so that, I think for young players just truly be a sponge to the game. Realize whatever you know today is only a fraction of what you're going to know when you get to the top. And it's okay to learn. Like, yes. I think so often in life, we hit 18, we graduate high school. A lot of people do, or we, let's say you go to college or you don't go to college. You're kind of done learning and you kind of do like your job. What job do you all work out there? Either a job that supports the family that we now have obligations as men to provide for or something that you're comfortable with. When you go into a team setting like a paintball team, it's not always going to be your way. You're not always going to be comfortable. Sometimes you actually have to go back to school at paintball and learn and like respect the process and become a better human being in the process. But I think that's why a lot of people quit playing paintball because the second that adversity comes, the second Marcelo gives me an earful, the second Tyler's questioning why I'm not there, why am I going home at one o'clock? Man, fuck that dude. You know what I mean? I'm going to do what I want to do. And as grownups, we can all do that, right? Like we have the ability to break <laughs> up with our significant others, be hermits, be losers, and do whatever we want to do. But when it comes to paintball, you're talking about seven, eight dudes on a team minimum, right? That mm -hmm. you have to just cl close your mouth. And I always say, take a little off the fastball. You know what I mean? Like if Marcel and I are talking across my table and 
Tyler and Rich Telford are here and Ryan Greenspan and Lord knows who he's talking to. All of a sudden we're all yelling. Next we're yelling at each other because I got to talk over you guys. But when you're in a group situation, sometimes like Marcelo, there's been times on Dynasty where we're sharing pits or close and I'm listening to what Marcelo is saying. And obviously there's a deep love that I have for him as a human being and as a friend. And afterwards I go to him and I'm like, man, nothing you said was wrong at all. Like you're spot on on what needed to happen there. But the way that you're coming off at these dudes, I just don't think, and it's like Mouse too, same with you, Tyler. I've seen your eyes blown out where you're like, dude, this guy's on a different level. Some people can't understand you sometimes. Like myself, I'm always the bad guy, the this, the that. Everybody that knows me knows, man, you call me, you're in my area, I'll come pick you up. You stay in my house as long as you need to. How many dudes have lived in my house? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. One of the nicest dudes there is, but there's a misperception and misconception on it. So I think sometimes with divisional teams, Sometimes a little less, you know, make valid points like Yosh on Dynasty. Yosh is like Silent Bob from Jay and Silent Bob, right? When he finally speaks, there's a lot of weight with it, you know? And with divisional teams, don't always just be pointing out everybody else's faults. Something I said on Diesel, right? You're welcome to point out everybody's faults on the team, but first point out one about yourself. And that's hard for a lot of people to do, right? Hey, I've been making these mistakes. And also, Marcelo, I think you need to do this. But I think by doing that, you know, we find more common ground than just constantly pointing fingers. Because there's always three more pointing right back at yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that's so well said, mm -hmm. Mike. Yeah, and and patience too, man. Be patient with the process. process We're in two year process to build a team, guys. Listen to me. Yeah. No matter mm -hmm. where you are, what league you play in, it's going into the off season. I said this to some of the local teams out here. Man, the phone's gonna start ringing. And, you know, that new violence jersey or the new this jersey or Phoenix Rising. And I'm just using big programs, right? It's going to mm -hmm. be appealing and enticing. But the four events you went through out here, it was grueling. Now you go into next year already having all that hard work behind you. And now we can focus on the more intricate parts of how we play paper. Hey, remember last year, Hinman? You got that major in the final or semifinals and you cost us, you know, what can we do to not do that next year? We've been through those growing pains and every team has growing pains. Every team has growing pains. So the longer you stick with it, much like everything in life, the better you will be. Don't just trade it in second times start to get tough. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Stick with it for two seasons and see where you're at. Yeah. Embrace that. That's the good shit right there when it's tough and it's, right. it's not. Yeah. You know, you have like to. that's where it's at. That's where the it's growth is at. But it's too easy these days to just trade people in and trade situations in and go somewhere else. But the same problems you had on this team most likely will be waiting for you on that team. Big facts. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I got uh, – that was that was profound, man. Um, we got, let's see, CB2K, the macro line gang. Shout out to the macro line gang. All these uh, players in the Discord, they all shoot macro line guns. Go get them. Uh, we got, do you think – that the drone footage for the WCPPL finals, uh, or what did you think about the drone footage for the WCPPL finals? And should the NXL implement that into the broadcast? They already, the NXL has drone footage, but I do want to kind of hit on um, all the developments that you had for the webcast, because that's a, a really big talking point and people really enjoyed that. Yeah, I mean, all of our developments on our webcast were from Ryan Polito that runs our webcast, right? He helps other people set up webcast. I think... I said to Ryan this weekend, I said, within a season, maybe two, because I do think next year there's going to be a lot of broke situations happening, less money in the industry. But hopefully in a year or two, it bounces back. We get a new president. Consumer <laughs> confidence lifts back up and we see a jump, right? Yeah. I'm not saying who's the president. I'm just saying. No, yeah. Hopefully we see people are scared right now that the economy is going to get worse, right? So people are sitting on money. But I think in a year or two, I said to Polito, I said, I'll be amazed if there's not four drones on every field. One sitting up on the snake side, whether it's 50 or 100 feet up, one on that Dorito side, 50, 50 on a stationary, and then one or two. I think it would be great for, you know, Heat versus Dynasty. Again, the bigger drones that are a little quieter. You don't want the like, little yeah. down. But if you could have those sitting back 10 feet up from the breakout, from the Vegas guys versus these, and you could see it and splice that together, mm -hmm. I don't know why you would need a lot of field mounted cameras anymore. Mm -hmm. totally honest i mean the drone footage it's it's a game changer and you know the mm -hmm. first guy that did it was rye guy media he sent yeah. me some video of a practice in indiana and just asked what do you think of this and it was just bird's eye view looking straight down at the layout 
I didn't know who was who. I'm sure he could have said this is this team or that team or whatever. But it was just from a coach's point of view, watching the X's and O's of, okay, now we're three loaded up snake side, one in the center, one Dorito side. I would push the Dorito side, try to turn that real quick and watching it transpire. I think it's a, a major game changer in scouting development and also just being able to show it because like that yeah. drone goes up there for 50 minutes or whatever and just sit. I mean, you don't have to fly it, yeah. right? It's, it's stationary watching. And I think that's a great view, right? It's And again, having also, one or two down lower, maybe on the back, the, that slide, the X, yeah. we did the X in San Antonio at our first USXPL we ran. We had the X, it was sitting over the top of the X pretty close. And we watched a guy, I believe it was on Hypnotic, come through the center of the X. There was a, a Xbox that was like a lay down door, just reach around gangster gat the dude, right? Just blind shot him. And it, it was pretty cool because <laughs> the drone was right on top of it. And you saw the move transpire. So it's super cool. I think I think yeah. Ryan's done a great job. It was his vision that we had to get that. We had nothing to do with it from a business standpoint. That was 100% him. And I think as we can, like we're, we've been talking about next year's budget. And it's like, man, I can see more drones. I can see a lot of drones, a lot of batteries. It's just cool, you know. And there was the one, there's a guy, I believe the Pirates were running down to try to score a point. And the drone was Dorito's side. And as the guy took off, the drone followed him down the field. Super cool. I know yeah, that's awesome. And I know that NXL has done a great job with that wire cam that they have that goes up and down the field, but that drone has, I mean, that wire cams two is basically just one axis, right? right. Next to why it's moving down the field. There's really no depth in it. That drone can do all three X, Y, and Z axes. So I think that's super important. So I, again, next two years by two years, I think everybody will be using multiple drones. I agree, man. And even having like a HUD or like a map in the corner with one up there, just showing that HUD screen of where the bodies are at would be really cool to see in the oh, corner too. Yeah. That's what Ryan and I were talking. We have guys on the field. Ryan does on scaffolding with cameras and stuff like that. And you're like, dude, that's cool. And I'm not trying to put those guys down, but that drone's still way cooler. It's catching it all. It's crazy. And especially yeah. the bigger drones, right? With like four or six blades on them that are very steady because we have yeah. a smaller one that is, you know, the wind picks up and it looks like the Blair Witch Project. That's not as cool, you know what I mean? But when you're yeah. just steady sitting up there and you're watching and then all of a sudden, there was another one, I believe it was Mint Factory. They released a clip on our thing of the guy shooting four guys and the drone's back behind the guy and you can see a sliver of the guy's arm and all of a sudden he walks out. And then mm -hmm. here you see the guy lining up because it's all ABC in a straight line. You just watch the guys getting eliminated. It's kind of hard to compete with that. Yeah, it's definitely looking like the future is going drone for sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, Andrew, we got the Dorfster 420. Uh, he goes, I would love to ask Mike, what are his thoughts on the way talent gets developed nowadays versus back in the golden era where most of today's best players came up? I mean, it's tough for pro teams to develop talent, right? And I think it's tough for any pro team, even if they could financially find a way to have a semi-pro team to do it, because let's just use California. Let's say Aftermath, Wayne runs Aftermath, he owns Aftermath now. He builds a semi-pro team. And let's just say he takes all the good talent from WC, the top level, the cream, slices it off, puts it on a semi-pro team. Well, if Wayne's happy with his pro team and now he's fostering this AAA team full of talent and the Ironmen are struggling or Dynasty loses three guys in the offseason, I'm not saying just very well could happen for any team in this region, then they're like, man, we're just going to go to Wayne's semi-pro team none of those guys are getting up to the pro team we're going to offer them spots and those kids are all going to jump so i think it's very tough for any big organizations like you both are part of with a serious amount of iq that could teach those players how do you do that and now you have one week in a layout right now so when dynasty or heat shows up to practice as much as we love the divisional guys that are out there watching us and being part of it and again, we'll use Tyler, for instance. Tyler is one of the greatest human beings I've ever met. But how can he do, and, and what I mean is, Ty, and he's also the nicest dude in the world. And it's genuine. Like, people have always asked me, like, Tyler, what you see is what you get with Tyler. That smile is from his soul. Like, he's a good-ass dude. But he's got three days to learn this field. And Sarge is paying him money to do that. And Tyler is committed to the men on the team with him to be the best that Tyler Harmon can be, as everybody is. How do they stop? And as much as we want to go,
go wrap our arm around some kid and show them because we see ourselves in that kid. We don't have the ability. We, we do like, and again, Tyler, Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Cool. But he has to keep it pushing because Todd's going to give him Intel. He has to do that. So it's very tough to develop talent right now. It's very tough. And there's a need for talent in the NXL pro division. The top five or six teams are pretty loaded beyond that. Every team has weaknesses, you know, snake guys, Snake guys in the NXL and in pro paintball and in any paintball are like quarterbacks in the NFL. There will never be enough good ones. Mm. You could have the last 40 years of great NFL quarterbacks playing right now, and there would still be a need for a better second or third string. So what I mean by that is as we develop this talent, and Aftermath has done it for years. Marcelo went to the Ironmen. Like these teams come and take talent from us. There's nothing to protect the teams doing that right now. And I don't know easily how you do that, but – there would have to be something from the Tom Cole level down from pro to semi-pro to maybe even D2 to have a farm team where there's some level of rights. If the teams, because why would dynasty or heat build a second team? They don't need to, but what's impacts game plan to develop talent. Let every other team do it and steal their number one player. Tell me I'm wrong. It's happened for the last decade. Every team does it. So in the regards of developing the talent, you can't develop the talent because as you develop the talent, that kid's gone. Even So until you address that, and again, I'm not saying making a young player stay under Dynasty's AAA roster for five years, they own his rights. But cool, you want this snake kid? Cool, we need two grand because that's what we put into training him. There has mm-hmm. to be something. Or the end of the year, maybe they go, whatever. But mid-season right now, you just come in. I mean, it happens to semi-pro all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I mean, fit a unique individual situation. But Blast Camp, I mean, everybody's gone at Blast Camp. Some of the guys have gone and come back. Zach Hogue went to Revo to Aftermath and back. But, I mean, everybody's trying to – Dynasty's offered their guys spots, right? It's not personal. It's just that's where the talent's at. And until we do something to protect that talent – there's just no benefit for us to build semi-pro teams anymore. You guys agree? I mean, there's there's a lot to unpack there. It, it's uh, it's definitely everything that you said is pretty spot on. You know, semi-pro teams gonna have one or two good players, maybe three, mm-hmm. if the four, right? But really, even when Aftermath won our pro spot going in, there was four or five dudes, six dudes. Yeah. Right, and. It, what I'm saying is we developed this great young snake player and I'm not, it's not a knock fucking one of your guys' ankles get popped. Like Chad George's did you need, and maybe it's bad. And maybe it's a six month to a year recovery time for him. Mm -hmm. I know for me as a coach, when we had issues this year with certain players, we talked about semi-pro and it's like, there's no real talent in there that we would want to bring up to the pro division right now. But if there was, we would have gone after him and offered him something and taken Mm -hmm. him. So you have a heart, you're constantly cannibalizing your next division down and luckily fit and blast camp. And also blast camp doesn't have as many teams around them anymore. Right. Like boom's gone. There's not a lot of teams in that area is trying to steal their players, but they're still getting hit up. Fit is a truly a family base. Chavez, Trenton Mason, the guys that people would probably go after are so committed to that family because they are part of the family at fit that you probably couldn't get them, but anybody else, they're just getting, I mean, Carolina crisis guys, teams like that are killers, right? People are going to go after their players. That's my opinion. Yeah. And then for cultivation of talent also, like you said, um, it's our responsibility as, as pro players when we're at our local parks and, and, you know, just paintball players in general, when you're at your local parks to help cultivate the talent there at the grassroots, you know, doing everything that we can to give a great experience, those little tidbits of information that might be minuscule to you or you might not even think is is going to help them open up that book and help help out a player help them out and make that experience for them you know develop and then once you get to that top tier level type of stuff you know you're right it's uh the top pro teams are going to um be watching that talent develop and typically uh, from what we've seen we'll say okay it's time to bring that player from this such team over to our camp. And then that yeah, talent will you did with Connor Kelly. Yeah, and if absolutely. you hadn't done that, somebody else would have done that. It wasn't yeah. damage. had been possibly looking at him. There's mm-hmm. if you hadn't taken Connor Kelly, a lot of other pro teams were going to be offering. You guys just hadn't yeah. 
what you were selling, he was buying. He wanted to go there. Also, what you hit on, Mike, uh, of just being a sponge, you know, Connor is such an outstanding individual on so many levels. Hardworking, um, two ears, one mouth, you know what I mean? And very receptive to information, very uh, self um, conscious of critiquing himself as well and, and just being hungry. And that's what it takes, you know, no matter where you're coming from, you're trying to climb the ranks and do whatever with your career, even if it's just climb to a different division or you want to go pro. Those are the types of tendencies you've got to lean into. You've got to be open to, you know, just being the best individual and soaking in as much information as you possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's hard for a lot of people to do, it but that's, be, it has to be genuine, you know? Yeah. Like there's, absolutely. there's an ex pro player that was playing premier in my last event and did well and saw one of his teammates at the tournament that he played with earlier this year before he got cut from the team. And the dude in general is a really nice guy, has ran a pro team, plays on the Ironman now. You could probably start to put this together. That dude said, what up to the kid? Kid said, hey, what's up? I don't talk to losers. Okay. <laughs> Douchebag. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And oh, all well, the rest of us in this conversation that thought he had had a really good event. Mm-hmm. And the guy, you know, the ex Thunder <laughs> owner guy is super nice human being. He just said, What up to him? I don't talk to losers. Cool, man. Like, you can't be that kid. <laughs> don't be that it's kid. Insane. Definitely don't be that kid. <laughs> you know, just be a good human being. Yeah. But, you know, some people out there, I don't think, understand what that really means. Right. And you're right with Connor. We're at practice with him and he's like, hey, what do you think I could have done? And it's like, man, yeah, you know, you did the best you could do in that situation. You need a hundred more of those situations. So it just becomes muscle memory when shit hits the fan, what you got to go do. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And you yeah. also get to a point where you realize Chad George and Alex Goldman are truly unique players. You can never be them. You can just be the best you you can be. And hopefully that's like those guys. But you can never emulate that little green guy on their shoulders that tells them what to do, whether you want to call him the angel or the devil. Mouse is definitely the devil. Like it, it is so unique for those human beings. And as a coach and a huge fan of the game, I realize it. I watch all of you play and I'm like, it's just, mm. it's, you're not saying Tyler's like who? Marcelo's like, no. There's younger mm. kids coming up trying to be like them but you guys are truly unique and it's okay. So new kids coming in, just be the best Connor Kelly. You can be, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That cultivate, but just be open to being the best. You cannot compare yourself to somebody else in life. You just got to, this is what God gave you, man. Be Mm -hmm. the best you can be. So true, man. Spot on. All right. I got a shadow shadow. The goat. What's the coolest place you've ever traveled and why? I don't really travel much out of our country, right? Like I've been, I did a season in Europe, all that. But uh, for me, going up to Canada, Wasaga Beach paintball, I played a 10 man in the woods up there. Yeah. With Wasagas way back in the day. Wasaga. And blew fireworks up that we bought at a gas station. But I mean, Sky Ball was always fun up there. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, it's not some great grand moment. I know you, like both of you guys have traveled all 24 time zones, I think playing paintball for me it's just been more being at local fields and being at wasteland or whatever the san antonio and just meeting random people and having gen yeah. you know like as much as we say that, like there's fans out there in paintball I, for me i've never had any fans i just got a lot of friends you know what i mean so getting to connect with friends and like-minded people and just talk some paintball you know what i mean has been the coolest thing for me because oh, yeah. all of us that truly love the game no matter, and it's paintball is a great sport, right? Like you can be any race of people, you can be any, you know, religious background, sexual preference. I don't think any of that has any bearing when we show up to the field. Like you really have 180 degree different walks of life come to a field and even be part of a team, mm-hmm. right? So for me, just being able to be around other people that are just different human beings than I am and just being able to have fun with it and, enjoy the moment you know it's probably the yeah. coolest thing for me i mean looking at that window on the plane thinking about life from thirty six thousand feet is always an interesting one right i it feel is. like those when you're leaving world cup both of you because one of you won't win maybe both when those tires leave the tarmac suddenly everything comes into focus real quick what we could have done better what we should have done better right and suddenly that introspective 
what we could have done better as that plane starts to pick up is unique. You know what I mean? And you really, for me, it always, the kaleidoscope goes into focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so funny. You say that it's so true. Every time you get on the plane and you're up in the air, you're just having the most profound thoughts about, you know, everything that could be done or, or how we can uh, be better in every situation and the relationships, man. That's really what it's all about. Mike is like, oh. we've been able to, to build so many amazing relationships across the globe and they're lifelong, you know, they'll yeah. last the, the entirety. And friendship doesn't come with an expiration date, right? Like you yeah. could not see somebody for 10 years, 15 years in paintball. And all of a sudden one of the original die kids from Marcelo comes back and you see him and you're just like, man, Yo, and if that person was 100%. a good person, like right. in their soul that you always connected with, man, man, it's been 10 or 15 years. What are you doing, man? You know what I mean? How's life? People send mm -hmm. me messages all the time. They're like, you probably don't remember me. It's like, of course I remember you. You know what I mean? I've just been blessed enough to be here still, but it, nobody quits paintball. They take long breaks. And I think everybody <laughs> wants to come back. We just have to give them a reason mm -hmm. and a format or something they can do that they can have fun playing again. Because once you get them hooked again, they paintball's fun, right? It's just it's all the on. extra stuff that comes with it. Sometimes the drama, the politics that make it not fun. The actual sport mm -hmm. in itself, that the 90 degrees of difference. We watch the game play, but once we walk through those nets and look downfield, that it's rush, on. right? Like it comes back. Hell yeah. And my last question from the Discord is from young Ben. He goes, Mike, seemed like everyone, including me, really enjoyed playing the X. What was the reasoning behind taking it away the last event? Was it because the first event didn't have the X? Is that young Ben from your team? Yeah, it is. Ben Slofer. Ben Slofer. <laughs> I, think I don't know who they are, but I do. <laughs> I'm like super creep on the internet watching yeah. everything. So fast. <laughs> no, we just wanted to keep it fresh. You know what I mean? Like, Next year, we're going to use the X. The mini Xs we will still use, I believe, at some level. They're just a tough bunker to maintain. We used them. Um, I believe uh, Virgil up at Blast Camp uses them. Chris at Bunker Fest used them. And I think if you ask anybody that owns them, they get ripped up quick. How this, you know, that crack where the X comes down, when you put your mm. barrel into that and pull the trigger, which is a great shooting port, right? It's hard to get hit right. unless they clip you on the hand. But the, how the seam sits into your barrel, like the high part of the seam, it's flat. And then where it rounds up is a, your balls go right into that crack. Sounds weird. But uh, it rips the seam right open. Like on ours, you can see it looked like black tape around the middle. Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little late, but fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but Frankie from our setup team that used and PPL Frankie actually measured it and got inner tubes and cut them open so it looked like a big piece of black tape around the middle of it just to try to stop those seams from getting ripped open but there's nothing you can do event mm -hmm. one we already had them getting blown to pieces but the big x we will bring back it just we right. all know what it's like right to get a bracket and especially west coast you know for you marcelo your team or the pole position guys all of a sudden you have two teams from back home in your bracket vegas misfits have the brawlers and bro army that all practice together so all of a sudden it's like, well, you're not really focused on the layout as much. You're just focused on, okay, we got to do this with the brawlers and this with bro army and this with the blood Hawks or whoever it is. But my belief was by throwing a little more variation into the layout, not that all of our layouts have not been top notch this year on all of our leagues, but by putting that X in there, there was a little more focus on the layout and who you had to play, but we're focusing on the layout and something different and I remember 20 some years ago when I would show up to Urban Quest or all these different fields of fire, Dave Bassman's field, and there was, you know, everything was in the woods back then. We had to put a lot of focus onto walking a layout and understanding how to just play that 55 gallon drums or wood bunkers, mm -hmm. whatever it was, how we had to play that field was an equal part of who we had to play. Mm -hmm. And when we do the same layout, because, you know, most of the NXL layouts that come out, and regional layouts that come out after it, you hear somebody say, oh, that was Chicago 2018 or something like that. There's something from that old layout that's part of this layout, some, you know, the snake or the Dorito, whatever it is. I just wanted something different so people could, switching gears, right? UFC, yeah. I'm, I'm fighting a guy that throws hands. Next guy is a wrestler. You know what I mean? Like I, different levels of it and just keep people focused on different things was kind of my theory. And I think next year, between both leagues, you won't see one or the other the whole season. You'll see both mixed in there, right? Was our goal. Mm -hmm. And it's fun and exciting. You know, the the Thomas Taylor 
factory of layouts. You know, he comes with a layout. There's a couple little things or maybe some more things like we like that snake and this Dorito. For, we have multiple layouts. We always start them on either Sunday night or Monday of the event. We start processing and then we kind of get what we like and we let it sit for 24 hours. Come back to it, take a look. Like the Texas layout had a mini X in front of the center, about 10, 15 feet up, a grid line up. Once we had set it up, we just looked at it and was like, yeah, let's just take this out, adjust the layout. There were some things on the WC layout, some adjustments we made last second, but just making layouts that we think are going to be competitive, fun, and people will get done with and be like, that was fun. Mm -hmm. I think that's our job as a, as a promoter, right. Is to make that field of play where guys like Marcelo and, you know, the true minds of the game, even Kyle Spicker, right? Like he's like, man, that first layout we had this year, you could have played that even to this point, they're thinking of, we could have played that so many other ways. And some one lost this layout, you could push hard snake and the other team could go hard Dorito. And now it's who gets up and runs to hit that buzzer first because you blow out both sides of the field. You don't want to a dynamic that's just one sided. You don't want it to be snake or Dorito or whatever it is. You want all three facets of the game, all three sides to be able to blow things open. Yeah. I've loved, I mean, loved every single layout you had this year at the WCPPL truly yeah. like every single one. I was like, I wish I was playing this. I wish we could play this. They, they yeah. were, uh, you know, your, your team and Thomas have done excellent with the, yeah, with Thomas the has some great ideas and yeah. puts a lot of time into it. We're just super stoked to have friends <clears throat> at that level that are that intelligent that totally. just make fun layouts. So that's on the X, we're going to bring it back. You know, some people had yeah. bought fields that bought the X's and we're like, man, you know, we got shorted on this. We bought this thing. And it's like, again, we don't want one person to have an advantage over another person. We want it to be truly a blind layout with everybody having a chance to have their weekend on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dude. Well, you guys care about it, and that's why you've developed such a great product for everybody. And and even down to the the last seconds, you guys are critiquing it, making sure it's a, a fun product for the customers out there. And that care shows. People see it, man. Yeah, we, really we have a great crew. Every tournament series that is somewhat successful or extremely successful, it's not just Tom Cole in the NXL. It's Fatty. It's their setup guys. And I don't think there's any bad crews out there, right? Everybody loves their crew. I can just speak for my crew. And – from Bobby to Alicia, Juan, Frankie, Trey, Colin on the paint truck. Like my crew is yeah, cool. to our league <laughs> and we have a great crew. And, you know, Timmy and Ahow and the guys that help out in Texas, we just have a really good, unique crew that I think we do things. We look at it and how can, how is this good for the player? I mean, Bunker Fest had a great crew of guys that did their job for them that are passion, right? There's not enough money in setting up a paintball tournament. Like, mm -hmm. We are paintball carnies, right? But we hundred percent. We truly, I think, all of us out there love what we're doing and trying to make it better for the players, so we go have a fun experience on the weekend. Yeah, well, it, it's truly showing, man, and we can't wait to see it continue to develop into twenty twenty four. Just some info uh, before we let you go, Mike. Thank you so much for dropping by. We got the pot. I think Pro Pink is going to make its debut at World Cup. Is that right, March? NXL Pro Pink. That's the NXL word. That's what we've yep. heard, right? That they're, yep. We've been using pink at WC for multiple years, and now they're going to bring it back. I think I can't imagine it not being a hit. It, makes, yeah. it helps the referees do their job and make accurate call. You just see it light up, right? Yeah. So I think that'll be fun to watch people get splashed with pink. Yeah, so we'll see that rolling into Cup there. And then uh, for everybody, we have a GOAT party tomorrow. If you, if you want to join the GOATs, uh, shout out to the GOATs who are going to be there. We're going to be partying it up. And then, Mike, I know you have some shout outs uh, that you want to, you know, just to your people and everybody before yeah. we let you go. Um, everybody that supports us, our leagues, you know, we, we love you guys. We appreciate it. If you have any thoughts, comments, we're all, myself, Tracy, all of us, Ryan Polito, webcast, Bobby, all of our referees, we're always willing to hear it. You know what I mean? Like, we appreciate it. Uh, 16 years later, you know. Damn. <laughs> I've become an older man doing this, but I still love doing it. It goes above being a pro coach or anything like that is truly growing this thing. We appreciate you guys. 2024 between both leagues, we have more announcements, more money going out the door, more fun stuff to do. So we're excited for it. And just, you know, thank you everybody that's been pro Mike at some point, you know, and apologize to all the people that we've offended or I've ever offended along the way. You know, part of the growing process is you just make mistakes and you you own it. You hug the cactus and you uh, you move <laughs> forward with it, right? So 
I'm excited. I'm excited for what this next year brings. I'm excited for paintball. I think it's the one time our alarm clock goes off and we look forward to waking up. Right. So absolutely. My dad, I appreciate being the third member of play the game. podcast. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hinge. We always, always appreciate having you on and everybody, like we said, you're a fan favorite. So I appreciate you know, it. Man. I, we appreciate I, the I just time. hope people realize I'm passionate about this game. You know what I mean? It's the one thing through my life through my dad and I did it like many of us did. And my dad's no longer part of this earth. So, you know, my sons and I have done it together and it's, I feel like it's the one Northern star for a lot of us, right? Like while we go about our ways in life, we always come back to this because it's a steady for us, right? Like no matter how bad a divorce or a death or business. And I don't have like, even if you don't come play paintball, just come to the field, come see your old friends. If it's around you, right. If there's something happening, if, if the darkness is getting dark in your life, just come to the field. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I tend to find going to the field, even ASG up the road, there's times I'm just tired. You know what I mean? Work and my other businesses and stuff. And I go up there and I see everybody and Danny Park's there and Keikoa's there and guys like that, that you're just like, man, it's good to see those guys again. And the yeah. more you're around the field, the more old friends we see. So besides that, That's I just true. appreciate it, man. I look forward to 2024 being my best year yet and just Let's having a go, baby. Hell Let's yeah. Go. So let's go, I appreciate Mikey. Both you guys, man. I'll be I'll be cheering and sending text messages from home. Heck yeah, doggy. We can't yeah. wait to see you soon, man. Awesome hinge. Thank you, brother. Right. Have, Have a good one. Love you, guys. Love love you brother. Peace. 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 All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please, as always, like, share, comment, subscribe. Help the algorithm. Let's get paintball in front of the masses. More people that like, share, comment, and subscribe, the more people that YouTube will show uh, these amazing episodes to. And hopefully that will help paintball grow in the long run. If you really enjoy the show, you could head over to ptgpaintball.com. Click the Patreon link in the top right corner and become a supporter at any level and you will get access to the Discord. But if you want the most exclusive access, tons of gifts, and uh, shows monthly that the rest of the uh, audience does not get, then become a GOAT. Become a GOAT. Who doesn't want to be the greatest of all time? I don't know. So you can get a seven-day free trial of the other tiers for the Discord, so you can try it out. No risk. And uh, I really think you should do it. So as always, thank you guys so much, and we will see you very soon.